Good morning, everyone. Can I please have a quick sound check? If you could please type a one in the chat box, if you can hear me, and also if you could see the shared screen, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, thank you so much, everyone, and welcome to the open house. It is 9.01 a.m. Eastern. It is June 6, 2019. The open house will uh, be open until 4 p.m. Eastern. Just please, please be advised that we do not take questions in the first hour, hour and a half, depending on price action. This is where the, our sweet spot is. This is where our focus is in the morning between 9.30 and actually 11, 11 o'clock to 11.30. This is our sweet spot. This is where we focus uh, most, of our, uh, most of our trading, most of our day trading. All right, if you should have any questions, feel free to post them in the question box. Uh, if your question is not answered, please retype it if you don't mind. My name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutloud.com, which is a trading education uh, firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade and swing trade the futures and the equities market. I've been doing this professionally for over 16 years, and I'm focused on day trading futures and swing trading futures and equities. Prior to becoming an independent professional trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. And I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on price support resistance, specific trigger time, specific price zones, and chart synchronicity. And you're going to witness, witness some of these elements here into the trading room. <clears throat> we have a full house today. We, uh, we had to extend. We, we originally had only 100 seats. We had to extend. We have 467 people right now in this room. All right. Um, we do offer educational classes for those of you that are interested in knowing how to day trade futures, swing trade futures, or swing trade and actively invest in stocks. And we also provide a live trading room every day that is open from nine o'clock to four o'clock Eastern on day trading futures and uh, swing trading futures and stocks as well. We also have an active futures trading program. Before we begin, please be advised of the risk disclaimer. All information provided by Trade Out Loud LLC is for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any other instrument of any kind. I'm pretty sure you know by now that trading involves a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You could lose money. Before deciding to trade, you should carefully consider your objectives, your level of experience, your risk appetite, and individual performance depends upon each person's skills, time commitment, and effort. Results may not be typical and individual results will vary. You must do your own research and make your own trading decisions. Past results are not indicative of future returns and trade out loud websites and subsidiaries and all affili affiliated individuals Assume no responsibilities for your trading and investment results. We are not registered nor licensed, and if you feel the need to seek financial advice, the only individuals you can contact are your financial planners, advisors, or brokers. All right, so with that being said, guys, let's take a look at the market and let's see what's, what we have going on, okay? We're gonna start off the day on a flat note here. And we have the Dow that is up only 20 points right now. We have the S&P two points up, NASDAQ up three points and barely a point up in Russell. Uh, oil is coiling around the 61.8 fib. We're gonna get into a, a deeper analysis, but this is just a quick observation. Gold is up $7 from last night. In terms of relative strength and relative weakness, we have a balanced market throughout. Structure-wise, NASDAQ is a little bit weaker, and we're going to talk about it. Before we continue with our technical analysis, let me remind you the major economic, uh, uh, economic events for today. If you've seen a big bar down on the early chart in most of the indices, that is because we did have an announcement. We have the, e we have the ECB press conference. We have the monetary policy statement 
uh, from Europe at 745 and the ECB press conference from 830. We also have some uh, economic releases uh, from uh, 1030. We have natural gas storage. At one o'clock, we have the FOMC Williams that will deliver a speech. And uh, that is pretty much gonna wrap up, uh, wrap up our day. So we don't have any other interferences as we're moving into the PM session. Please note that this trading room will be on break between 12 o'clock and two o'clock. We do not trade the doldrum period. However, before the break, we will highlight some trading ideas for those of you that are more aggressive traders. Also, please note that throughout doldrum, lunch doldrum period, price action seems to be a little bit whippier. So our attention is going to zoom out to larger timeframes. All right, so uh, let's, begin, uh, let's begin with our analysis. First off, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna begin with uh, YM, and this is the m and &E Dow. We're gonna go far out to the weekly chart to see its activity. As you can see, you, we have some alerts here, and I'm gonna show you in just a little moment what these alerts represent. Last week we had, uh, last week's trading activity pushed the price below its support level at the 25 to 40 level, pushing the price a little bit lower, landing into this cluster of resist, uh, the cluster of support to the left-hand side. Also, notice that this week's trading activity, and by this week I mean Monday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and overnight Thursday have pushed a price higher. And again, we were trading on a higher note this morning. Dow was almost trading at the 25,650 level. So as you can see within the last three days and a half, we have managed to progress quite considerably into the Dow and in most of the indices. Last week's high was right here into the 757 level. If the price will manage throughout the trading session today or tomorrow, these two days right here, if the price is gonna manage to try to challenge this prior weekly high, we're off to the races and we can expect higher prices back into the 26K and open void into the 26200 and even higher back into these highs. So it's contingent, the follow through is contingent on this breakout higher off of this 757 level. So far we have positive price action. We're gonna zoom in just, a, a, just a one time frame to the daily. Daily is stuck into resistance. You can see a doji right here so far. Asian session and London session have created this price action activity. So we do have support that is uh, actually the first level of support that is Right here, you can see the first alert into the 376, and we have the second level of support into the 25200. So I'm going to set alert for this as well. This is helping us in our um, in our trading as we progress throughout the day. We need to be aware of these levels. So today, if we don't today, if we're going to stabilize between the overnight trading session low and the overnight trading session high, we're, we're gonna be ending up the day in a doji. What this means is that this is going to be the decision day for most of the indices. What this means if we wrap up the day within the same parameters that we have traded in the overnight trading session, it would mean that into tomorrow's trading session, if we break today's low, but today, 4 p.m., right, low, we can see more progression to the downside into the 25200 level. So far, 50-50 shots, long and shorts right here. If we break over the highs, we're gonna be continuing higher. So we're gonna be evaluating the 660 level, 660, six, I'm sorry, 650 to 660 level for a progression higher back into the 757. So if we trade over today's overnight highs, we do have an open void and price trajectory all the way into the 700, 700 and also 750. So we do have from the high, from the 650 to the 750, we do have a tradable void of about 100 points. 
holdback buys are going to be in place. So, so far, we don't have a bear day yet. Why? Well, let's take it a notch down to the hourly charts. Notice the progression higher, right? We have established a low, right? On Monday, in the overnight trading session, we have progressed higher. We have established higher highs and higher lows. And so far, we're riding the 20 SMA trade. As long as the price is holding this 20 SMA trade, we can still look for a progression higher back into the high in the overnight trading session into the 640 to 650 zone. We break above the 650 zone, we have the doors wide open to the 750. So as long as the price is gonna hold this support level into the, uh, into the 550 zone, even into the 500, we're still gonna be looking for some pullback by activity off of these levels because we've had a pretty nice consistent run to the upside. This is the m and &E down. So they all have the same balance. Let's continue with the m and &E SMP. We're gonna go far out to the weekly. The weekly trigger for a continuation for a reversal higher for a possible buy long is going to be 28.42 to 28.43. If we break over the 40s, we will be triggering a weekly reversal, which is strong because it opens the door for further continuation higher, at least into the 2875. That's a huge target. And uh, not only that, but we will be looking for pullback buy. So our job is gonna be pretty easy if we see a break of 40. Now, remember the overnight trading session came very close to the 40 to about 28.38, so really, really close to triggering a weekly buy zone. This is very, very important because if we, if we realize this trigger, we could see a really nice price advancement, not only into the first target, into the 28, uh, 28.80 zone, but also for a possible continuation higher into the 29.30 uh, 29, plus. Let's take it a step down to the daily chart. Daily chart is pretty much stuck into support and resistance. We have support at 2800 deriving from a prior pivot low from price action and we also have resistance from prior price action right here and in fact this resistance at the 2840 represents last week's high. Remember what I said just a couple of seconds ago, we trade above last week's high, we're pushing higher. And the next immediate target is going to be into the 2860. And we're gonna look for a progression higher into the 2900. Okay, so this looks very, very good. All right, so, uh, which leaves us to our immediate price action, hourly charts. Early charts, you can see right here, support going into uh, Monday. We have a series of higher highs and higher lows. We're trying to shift the trend from last week, and we're right there into that high. Are we gonna break the high? Today, that's gonna be the question. Are we gonna break the high? All right, so we're riding the 20 SMA train, as you can see, and also, uh, also this bar right here, following the uh, ECB press conference came in to a confluence zone. Not only the 20 SMA that we have here, but we have these prior highs that are creating minor support for current price action. If we see a small reversal off of this area, we could see the price zip up back up into the 2837 to 2840 zone. So the next support levels are 2827, we need to hold 2820. 2820 has been a median for last year and continues to be a median, a coil zone for this year as well. Okay? So we're gonna be looking at 2820. We're not gonna be bearish into the 2820 zone, right? Because we're still respecting the uptrend. All right, let's continue with NASDAQ. Okay, NASDAQ, we're gonna go far out to the monthly chart. Now, Here's the thing with NASDAQ. NASDAQ 
after setting a new high into the 78, uh, into the 78, and this is the monthly chart, okay, into the 78, 78, 79, I'm doing a little bit more analysis into NASDAQ because it has a weaker chart structure, all right? This is last month, this is the month of May that came back in and tested the 20, the, uh, the 10 exponential moving average and then came right into the 20 simple moving average. And this is just three day activity right here, three, three and a half day activity. Let's go a, uh, a little bit closer to the weekly chart, zooming in on the weekly chart. After pushing lower throughout this week, earlier this week, we came back in and we have regained the area above the 50 simple moving average. And as you can see right now, we're trading into resistance. Look at the left-hand side at this prior high right here. Okay, look at this prior high right now. 20, 7220 zone. 7220 is an area of resistance here that if the price will manage to push higher throughout the trading session today, guess what? This area, the 70 to 20, will become support for further price action. And notice that the price is trading at the 70 to 30 area. Still stuck between moving averages between the 50 and the 20, but the more the price will progress higher, the more it has odds of continuing higher into the into this uh, into this cluster of resistance right here. Now, as you can see from the weekly chart, it will take a bit more effort for Nasdaq to actually trigger a weekly reversal. Okay, so it's the one index that is lagging. We need to see NASDAQ all the way into the 73, 74 level in order to start talking about a reversal on the weekly, right? In order to, uh, in order to start and regain back, uh, uh, back the bullish territory into the 7,500, 77, and these are targets 7,740. So we really need to do an extra effort. NASDAQ needs to do an extra effort here. And this was due partly by the fact that we had some relative weakness into Google. We had relative weakness into Amazon, relative weakness into Facebook. Uh, Apple, uh, I wouldn't say Apple was relative weak, but we did have some relative weakness and some big components within NASDAQ. So it's gonna take a little bit more effort for NASDAQ to become really bullish at this point. The daily chart, as you can see, we had a peekaboo above the 10 exponential right here and trading right into this minor support deriving from this prior pivot low from 513, from about a month ago. So right now you can see that we have the development of, let's say a doji right now, okay? Let's take it a bit a step closer to the one hour for our day trading purposes today. Bar down following the ECB, but we're still trading into this cluster. So uh, if the price, if the price is going to remain within this cluster, I'm going to remain bullish. So I'm going to look for pullback buy opportunities right here. Okay, pullback buy opportunities. We break above these highs over 63 over the overnight highs. You could see that this was a big barrier. Uh, price action um, uh, last week as well. And if we break above this, guess what? We're moving higher, okay? This also resembles a head and inverse head and shoulder patterns where you have the right shoulder, you have the left shoulder right here, and then you have the head. This would represent the neckline into the 7260 zone to 7270 zone. All right, we break above this, we're moving higher, okay? So there's no guessing as directional bias is concerned, right? So all we have to do is wait for pullback and buy it, pullback and buy it. I'm not shorting pullbacks. Just so you know, I take very few trades a day, one to three trades a day. If the market is not lining up, I am not taking any kind of trades, okay? So I take very few trades. I'm not gambling, just a heads up on that. So I take very calculated risks in this market.
And in any market, in any market that you're trading, I'm not just spitting out, in, out, in, out, in, out, because I don't want to rack up commissions and losses. <clears throat> okay? So this also looks like an inverse head and shoulder patterns right here. All right. So our game plan is as long as we're following, and you can see here that NASDAQ has had a very hard time following the 20 SMA trade. And we've noticed that the S&P and the Dow have had a really nice uh, a continuation higher, nice smooth transition to higher price targets. And NASDAQ is having trouble, right? NASDAQ has been having trouble. And all in all, what this is, is a wider range, okay? It is a wider range. It is a bullish wider range, but it's still a range, okay? So at this point, I'm moderately bullish on price action, okay? Moderately bullish on price action. If we trade below some key levels right here into the 71, uh, 7150, I will begin to be bearish. I will actually begin to be bearish a little bit higher price than that into the 7190s. All right, let's move on to Russell. I'm gonna move far out to the weekly in Russell. Weekly reversal buy potential, uh, 1524 over last week's high, okay? Over last week's high. Also, this resembles an inverse head and shoulders, right? Where this is the right shoulder, this is the left shoulder, this is the, ne this is the head, and this is the neckline right here into the 16, uh, 1600, right? So we can treat this whole entire area from 1450, to 1600 as a sloppy range. That's why the buying came in at the 1450 and pushed a bit higher, right? So it doesn't need, Russell doesn't need a lot of effort to get into that 1524 zone. As you can see right now, it's trading into the 1507, made a high here into the 15, 1516 zone. So it doesn't need that much to progress higher. Once this trigger, once this triggers, we're gonna witness more buying pressure to the upside and the next target is into the 1550 zone. Let's take it a step down to the daily chart. Daily chart, doji already on the daily. So here's our plan, 1492. This is a bit easier here than in other indices. All right, gonna put it below. We trade below the 1492 to 1491. We're gonna be bearish. We trade above yesterday's high of 1516, 1517. Guess what? We're gonna be bullish, okay? Oftentimes, we have used Russell as our market gauge. It's weird because it shouldn't be like this, but since last year, when the volatility has started in February, we have had clues from Russell in terms of directional bias. Russell is weak. You're gonna often see that the rest of the indices are following. Russell is strong. It creates more juice to the upside for the rest of the indices, okay? As weird as it may sound, it is what it is. All right, so let's move it. Uh, let's move it a bit closer. Let's zoom in on the price action. So obviously, we break over these highs right here. We're gonna we're gonna be bullish all the way from 16 to 24. We have the 24 trigger. We're zipping higher. Okay, as long as this 90 level remains intact, I will remain with the bullish bias. Okay. And I'm going to be waiting patiently for a setup to form. I'm not trading without any setup. Okay, just to be clear, I'm not trading with any setup. All right, let's move on to gold. Last two, uh, last two charts that we're going to be analyzing before the open. Um, and uh, by the way, I do release a video. It is a weekly video um, that I share on YouTube. You could go to our YouTube page. It's www.youtube.com forward slash trade out loud. I put this video every 
weekend on Saturday or Sundays. And if you subscribe to the channel, you will receive a notification every time it, uh, every time it comes up and every time it's being published. And we talk about directional bias. We talk about bias for the week. Just take a listen to our last week's bias. Right, just take a listen to our last piece bites. We were bullish on gold, okay? And uh, gold actually has, uh, has fulfilled a big target into the 1350 here. Big, big target into the 1350, okay? So it's into massive resistance into the 1350. Does it have room for higher? Yes, it does, okay? Yes, it does. And by the way, I wanna put up the monthly chart Monthly chart is bullish. Monthly chart is bullish. Low, higher low, higher low, higher low, and we're establishing a higher low. This is actually, this 1360 to 65 is gonna be a big major breakout here. Hourly chart. Last night when we uh, did the wrap up uh, before four o'clock, we did see the potential uh, the potential pullback and buy at this zone. Okay, we did see the potential of pullback buy at this zone with an hourly reversal. You can see what happened here. Pull back. We did not take the trade. Okay, disclaimer, we did not take the trade. Okay, and as you can see, the overnight trading session has re revisited the low. Okay, and it's back up. I think that goal needs to set, I think that goal really needs to pull back at least into the 1325 level okay at least into the 1325 level and i'm gonna put an alert for that okay we need to see it at least into this level and as you can see it's meandering between support resistance support resistance support resistance right and this is massive resistance into the 50s all right let's take it a, uh let's take it uh back into the daily chart okay you could see right here the resistance from the 50s and the pullback that I'm watching here is deriving more from the weekly chart. Just share it with you. Deriving more from the weekly chart. And this is the prior high that I'm that I'm watching. Okay. All right, let's take a quick look at crude and then we're going to be getting ready for the open. All right, weekly chart. One, two, three bar down, trying to call coil. <laughs> excuse me, uh, at the 200 simple moving average, big deal here, the king of all moving averages and also support at the 51 zone. Let's take it a step back uh, to the daily chart. Daily chart still, as you can see, this is yesterday's bar that was actually accelerated lower and it had a catalyst, right? It had the oil inventory numbers at 1030, after 1030, it became very jittery very, very steep pullback for the daily charts. I'm sorry, for the intraday charts, that is. But this level represents support here at the 52, all right? And it also represents a considerable fit. By the way, guys, the market is open. Okay, just gonna do this, uh, this wrap here with crude, and then we're gonna go to some active watches, all right? As you can see right here, we're trying to coil around the 61.8% fit. We are one, two, three, four, five bars down. And so far we have an inside day. Okay, by the way, guys, AMD, AMD pushing higher. Okay, don't forget, guys, we are not taking questions in the first hour and a half at least. All right. Uh, Disney over 136.47 as well. We're popping higher. We're popping higher, guys. All right. So, in terms of in terms of crude, I want to see how it behaves. Be, uh, how how price action is behaving between this low and this high right here. If it starts regaining the fifty two fifty area, I'm going to be very interested in watching it. All right. This is this is this is the area the 5250. See where this fib is. If it regains this area, I'm gonna like it for a long. So far, I I'm not in for a short or a long at this point. All right. So as you can see right here, I am watching. Uh, I am watching the two minute charts. 
I'm watching the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ. I'm watching Russell. And I have my two uh, commodities here, gold and oil. I rarely take day trades in gold or oil. Rarely. I have these charts mostly for swing trading. Okay? For swings. And I'm going to be watching this. So th this to me is a very interesting area right here. So I'm, I'm just going to set an alert. So in case we get carried away with trading, remember when you're trading, you, you're so focused that you don't have time to analyze other charts, right? Especially in day trade. If you're swing trading, you could chat, you could start typing, you could tweet, you could Facebook, you could do whatever you want, Skype. But when you're day trading, you have to have your like, super focused uh, attention on what's going on. All right, so uh, tip what typically happens and the structure of the market here is that I typically watch price action from the open and watch how it behaves in the first 30 minutes of the day. Uh, the most important part of day trading pretty much sets up in the first 30 minutes. We need to see the 30 minute lows and the 30 minute highs and how it calibrates. Uh, 10 o'clock uh, is one of the biggest reversal times in the market. And if we get a pull in, like we're doing right here, um, we can expect the price to start rotating at around 10 o'clock. There is also a minor uh, reversal time in the market that is coming at around 9.45. But again, that's minor. So Usually what happens is that if, if the price is trading within a cluster, you can see some breakouts or breakdowns around that time frame. And this is with correlating time with price action activity. Um, other than that, uh, I typically watch price to see how it handles the 9.30 to 10 o'clock. And then after 10 o'clock, uh, I start actively watching for a setup that is developing between uh, 1015 and uh, I would say 1040. That is my prime trigger time for a setup in the futures uh, for, for day trading, obviously. All right. So um, as of right now, we're actively watching these charts. Uh, at this moment, uh, I do have two favorites right off the bat in case the market decides to uh, flip the coin to the upside and regain a strength to go back up. And uh, those two indices are the Dow and S&P. So these are my two favorites right now because they do carry relative strength. And we talked about this for the last 30 minutes. Uh, also, if we start um, some weak price action activity, I would like to focus on NASDAQ because it has a weaker chart structure, okay, than the two indices. I do not have tunnel vision and I do not take the S&P and trade only the S&P just because I really like the S&P and everybody out there at the water cooler is just trading the S&P. No, I'm not a market maker, okay? So I'm a day trader and I like to stick with relative strength and relative weakness and do my bias and try to select the trade that has the best odds of running higher faster or running lower faster than watching pain drive. Okay? So just to give you a heads up of what we can expect in the next 15 to 30 minutes of price action activity. All right, 9.35 so far. When, uh, uh, and also be aware of potential uh, of potential tweets, of potential um, announcements. Uh, remember, we're in full discussions with Mexico, with China, and any kind of rumor that is coming out uh, is going to be seen as on charts, obviously, as volatility. Just a heads up, we do have micros available, uh, and this is, our, this is the one month anniversary since they have been issued by the CME group. What this means is that micros are a great vehicle to trade, especially in volatile markets. Volatile markets create wide stops. I'm not the one that is creating the risk or the stop or the trade. You are not the one that is 
deciding or have any right to decide what your risk for that specific setup is, but the market is establishing that. The market is establishing the setups. You just have to follow the setups and you just have to follow support resistance in order to see whether you are going to enter the trade with a micro contract or with a full size contract. Did I say that right, Herb? <laughs> okay. All right. The full size. We had a debate yesterday. It's like, okay, so what am I calling? What am I calling DC minis? Like, am I calling them like what? Like original contracts? Or, okay. So we had a debate on that. Okay. And we decided on the full size. Okay. Full size contracts. So the e mini or the micros. Okay. Micros are a great vehicle for position sizing. And I could talk right now a little bit because I'm observing price action. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the, this screen that you guys see projecting uh, because I like to monitor all the indices to determine whether they, which one has relative strength and which one has relative weakness. So I was saying that the micros have great potential for, um, uh, great potential for trading. Uh, and uh, I know I have received some emails and some concerns about commissions. I mean, seriously, if you guys are concerned about commissions, you shouldn't be trading at all. Because when you're trading and when we're trading here, we're not focusing on making two ticks or two ticks or three ticks. We're going for full points. Okay. So just to give you a heads up on that, uh, I often have, uh, have this question in the trading room. Uh, for a risk, the average risk for a small, small account size is around $200. And what this means, let's say, if we're trading the m and if we have a stop, and remember, the stop is not determined by myself, the stop is not determined by you, the stop is determined by the market. So that is the support level, the pivoting area in the market. So if we have a stop, at, let's say if, we, if you want to use a risk of $200, okay, and uh, if, you, um, if you have, let's say, a five-point stop, you can use eight contracts, right? And, uh, that'll, uh, and if, it, let's say if you have a 10-point risk in the S&P, and yesterday and the day before yesterday, we did see some pretty wide ranges uh, in the M&E S&P of about 10 points. So you could use four contracts. You want to risk $100, you could use two contracts. So uh, on four contracts, the commission is 20 bucks, okay? The commission is, uh, is uh, only 20 bucks. So basically you need, to see, uh, you need to see the price up two points in order to, uh, uh, or a point, actually a point and a half or something to, to make the commission, or even less than that. Because commissions are, are really, really, really small. Whether you're using uh, any platform, any platform that you're using, okay? Um, all right, so now I'm gonna get into really focused. I'm going to be uh, um, uh, slightly, I'm, I'm still gonna be here on the mic, but I'm just uh, gonna be quiet and observe price action and wait patiently uh, for the next setup. Does that make sense? Okay, I will take questions after 11, 11 15 or so. Just want to make sure that we're not missing any kind of trades. Just flipping through some names right now. And uh, in about two to three minutes, we will uh, start to look at... Um, some stock names. actually in about five minutes or so.
Very wimpy price action right from the open here. Flipping through some charts. Very whippy, whippy price action going up, going back down in all these indices. Remember, we need to have, and in fact, on Monday, I think we had to wait until 3.30 to have a trade. So no patience, no money. Remember, the hardest part of trading is not pushing the button and uh, it's actually waiting for the setup. So far, we have about five seconds to go into 9.45 and we're already establishing a, a temporary bottom. Let's see if this bottom is gonna, is gonna hold. By the way, guys, AMD is into, um, into target zone here at um, $30.75. In AMD, we have an active trade in AMD from a while back. We have an active trade in AMD. Take some profits here. Take some profits into the 75 and just leave it on. Semis are strong today. Some semis are strong. The sector is not at all. The sector is barely crawling and is trying, is really trying to recoup. Thank you so much, Herb. As of right now, I, so I know it's still a little bit early, only 15 minutes into the trading session, but I like YMNES. Dow and SMP so far for possible longs. Let's see if this is gonna be the bottom here for the New York trading session. Notice how crude is um, popping off of this uh, off of this sixty one point eight percent fib. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Wow, it's very whippy. trying to establish uh, the range for the New York trading session so hard. Russell Whippy as always. All right, so um, 10 more minutes to the top of the hour. Support now is 550, 550 for support. And in fact, it's minor support right now. Uh, and that's from yesterday's price action in YM. I, I kind of like YM here. Uh, the New York trading session low, obviously you see it here into the 450. But New York trading session support, uh, New York's trading session high from yesterday is creating the 550 support zone for today's price action. Let's have a little bit of patience and wait for that picture perfect setup. Lots of whippiness so far. Lots of effort in YM and in establishing the range.
Okay, just so you know, guys, I typically don't have any uh, any news on when I'm trading because I don't want to be influenced by anything that is being said on TV or social media or anything. So I try to stay away from all the drama. Uh, but it, because we are in the midst of everything that's going on right now with China and Mexico and you know all the things that are uh, that are going on right now, I am going to have. So you're going to hear some little background noise. I don't know if that's going to annoy you or if you even hear it. But I do have CNBC on right now, and I typically don't. So um, okay, if that. Uh, if, if that is uh, creating any distraction, if you hear any noises, I will uh, uh, I will tune it down a bit. Okay, notice that Russell is making a new low, 15.02, trading right now, 0.9. We have seven minutes to the top of the hour, and uh, YM and S&P are still holding the lows. Like I promised a bit earlier, uh, let's take a look at some stocks and let's see what's going on. So we do have uh, we do have Disney, which is flat on the day. We have Walmart, which is flat on the day. We have UNH flat on the day. Home Depot, just a little bit lower, ninety six cents down on the day. So one zero dollar zero point four nine percent. Boeing uh, down two bucks zero point five seven percent. These are just some Dow components that I'm watching. And uh, these Dow stocks are pretty are are holding so far, so they have pretty positive price action reaction so far. Uh, Apple down only twenty five cents, zero point fourteen percent to the downside. Micron as well. These are some Nasdaq stocks that I'm watching. So um, Google is down almost seven dollars. Um, Amazon is down eight. And a half dollars. Uh, financials are still flat, so that leads me to believe that there is, there may still be some hold in the market, as long as we have financials on our side. Um, Cisco um, flat uh, on the day so far, and financials are still holding. So financials are acting good. I'm looking at uh, JP Morgan is right into that resistance right now into the 109.50. Uh, Wells Fargo trading at the 20 SMA. Um, so I still see some positive reaction here. Um, XLF as well. XLF is actually has actually triggered a continuation for the for uh, for uh, on the daily chart, so that looks uh, that looks uh, positive. Hey, thanks, Tom. Thanks for the feedback. Just let me know. Okay, so I'm not going to clutter your ears and your brain with any unnecessary analysis. But uh, for the day, we have five minutes to the top of the hour. 30 minutes is uh, one of my gauges for the morning. And in fact, uh, I do have the 10 a.m. rule uh, that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. In about five minutes, we're just going to have to wait for the 930 to the 10 o'clock uh, time frame completion. And also, we're going to have uh, a wrap of the first 30 minute bar and the first hourly bar now into 10 o'clock. So Let's just wait patiently for this. I'm gonna uh, zoom into the four hour charts just to see how they are structured. I'm not gonna bring them here, but um, because I don't wanna miss any kind of setup on a smaller time frame. but um, we're trading and the Dow is really trying to push below the last four hour bar is still holding support, but is really trying to push below the four hour bar, which would put it into, uh, into a cell, uh, cell setup. The S and P has already triggered that four hour reversal for lower 2820 becomes support from the four hour, uh, NASDAQ, uh, on the four hour, uh, NASDAQ already trading on support here into the seven, seven, 7200 to 7212. Just remember that's a thick cluster and that is created by all this volatility that uh, uh, from yesterday and even from today. I mean, look at the wicks and the whip right now. 
and Russell. Russell is very slippery, so I'm going to stay away from calling any trades in Russell. Uh, Russell already trading at the 1500, already violated the 10 exponential moving average and minor support. There's still a level of support at the 1496 to 1492. I am looking, uh, Dorothy, I'm looking at charts. I'm looking at charts. Uh, let me see if I could take the screen to show you. Okay, I'm gonna try to drag it up here. I have, uh, I have six monitors here, and this is, how, this is how my watch list is displayed. Okay, so I don't have it on a list per se, but these are stocks that are very important to my everyday watch. Okay, can you guys see it? You can please type a one if you see it. All right, okay, good. All right, um, and this is the first time when we're hosting a webinar with Zoom, so I hope that you guys are gonna give me a few. Hey, Bernardo. Hey, Jane. <laughs> Perfect, all right, guys. Awesome. Okay. Full house today. Like I said, we have a full, full, full house. We had to supplement a lot of seats. I was with them on the phone this morning. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're still, we're still, uh, we're still coiling. See the chop, chop zone. All right. So, uh, for today, one, uh, one of the favorites, if we start pushing higher, and now we're trying to, uh, to test 30 more seconds to the top of the hour, okay? This is what I'm watching right now. This is the two-minute chart of the Dow. It had the stronger structure. It remained sideways, and as you can see here, this is the pullback, and this is after the ECB press. This is during the ECB press conference and the volatility that uh, followed uh, that followed shortly after. So now we need to see where the price is going to establish support. Be very patient. You're not missing anything uh, right now because there are no setups in the market. Okay, there are no clear setups in the market. There's literally, you know, nothing to um, nothing to say. Uh, Rudy, Zoom is working perfectly. That's great. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks for the feedback. It, it's our first time we switched from Webinato. And in fact, uh, I did have some issues with Webinato and especially with the recordings with, uh, uh, with Webinato that, you know, didn't turn out that great. So plus it was creating a lag, uh, on charts, so whenever we were discussing, uh, you know, charts or anything, it had about a 10 seconds to 15 seconds delay. And when you're day, day trading, that really matters, right? Because when you're in a trading room and when you hear me call a trade, let's say we call NASDAQ long at 30, uh, 72, 30, the price, when you guys get, because of the volatility, you know, when the price, uh, when the price goes to 72.30, by the time you hear it, it could be like 72.35. So you don't have a lot of um, a lot of reaction time. But with this, you know, you you have a lot of reaction time. Just uh, and speaking about orders, uh, we only use limit orders, so we don't use market orders. I don't just say, "Oh, grab it here." Okay. Very rare instances when I say, "Okay, take it here, get it here." when we're having a range, right? And those are like maybe, I don't know, maybe two or three times, five times a year that we buy at market. Uh, all of our entries are limit orders because we know exactly where we want the price. We know exactly where we want the stop and all that, uh, and all that stuff, okay? Top of the hour, okay? Top of the hour and we're trying to establish support. So far we have the m and &E Dow, and this is the 10 o'clock analysis. We have the Imini &E Dow with support uh, into uh, 10 o'clock, continuing to be into the 540 zone, 550 to 540 zone. 
All right, so we didn't breach it by much. It came in just a little bit into the 38, just scaring everybody in. I don't know if this is gonna be a scare everybody or take everybody in short and a very sharp rotation that may take the price much higher. But uh, this is definitely something that we need to watch. So the 10 a.m. low is basically into the 540 area and the 10 a.m. high is into the 620 zone. What this means for price action is that uh, from the New York trading session high, if we break up off the high of the New York trading session, we could see a more accelerated price action uh, over 620. So we break 620, we're going to have a long bias for the rest of the New York trading session. We break below 540. Again, we do have multiple levels of support, but once these supports are going to, uh, are going to, uh, hold, we're still going to be looking for some pullback buy activity. The m and &E and low holding, the 10 o'clock uh, low is holding at the 28.25. And as you can see right here, 28.35 is the high. So once again, what kind of range do we have? 10 points, right? We have a 10 point range. We break above the high, we continue higher. I wish it could be that easy because if we break the low, we continue lower, but we do have substantial support from our hourly charts uh, and uh, we're not going to be just quite bearish yet. Notice that um, NASDAQ 10 a.m. low is 72.16 and uh, 10 o'clock high is 72.47, very wide ranges to start off the day. In fact, NASDAQ is grinding lower. We talked about the fact that NASDAQ has a, low, has a weaker structure. All right, we're attempting to do a 15 minute reversal here. 573 by 535, 73 by 35. All right, this would be the first meaningful reversal. Right, 75, let's just watch it for a little, let's just watch it for a little. 75 by 35. <laughs> Just watching this. Perfect, Rudy. <clears throat> Seventy five by thirty five. Why am long seventy five by thirty five? You could take it here as well. Seventy five by thirty five. We got to get a first target into the ninety five. Here it is again. Seventy five. You're using limit orders. You just got filled. This is in sync with reversal time. Thank you. 
Oh, no problem. It's fine. It's just a little bit more aggressive. Uh, I'm seeing a target into 95. In fact, 90. Let's keep 90 for our first target. Target 190. Perfect. Thanks, Herb. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's a bit more aggressive, but. Uh, yes. 75 the entry, 35 the stop, 90 the target for, that's target one, 90 target one. Okay, I'm gonna type it here with, with caps. I keep on forgetting the caps on. Okay, so first off we type the symbol. Okay, the direction, long or short, and then 75 by 35. Seven, the first number represents the entry. Obviously 35 is the stop. And 90, 600 for the targets. I'm gonna type it right now. And maybe 609, 609 for the last target. Okay, so the first element is the symbol, whether it's YM or ES or whatever it is. Uh, the second letter is long or short. The entry price by the stop price. And then you have the targets. Come on, market. Russell needs to start picking up the pace. Russell needs to see a print of 1502 in order to start progressing higher. Come on, we need to see a print of uh, here. We need to see a print of 86. We need a print of 86. Trying to hold. <clears throat> Come on, we need to see a print. Now we need to see a print of 84. We need to see a print of 84. 84, 85, 86. This is going to help for price action trajectory into 90. And by the way, guys, I'm on the mic. I'm trailing the position live. You're not left hanging. If we get a print of 87, we're gonna start reducing the stop. Until then, no action. Very jittery price action. Thirty minute, uh, and thirty minute is reversing off of uh, the fifty SMA. We need to create a hook here. Let's see where the price wants to establish a little hook in order to start progressing higher. Come on, eighty five. So we need to see a print of eighty five. We need to see a print of 85 to start the progression towards 90. In fact, the targets are, are going to be in five point increments. It's gonna be 90, 95, and 600. And then from 600, we have a void to 604. And then we have another void to 610. Should the price cooperate and start moving higher? This is part of a five minute reversal. Here it is. This is a five minute reversal off the 200 SMA price progression higher. 
And we have support on the 30 minute right here. You could see it on the 50 SMA. Oops, sorry about that. Here it is on the 50 SMA, it was the wrong candle. Okay, here it is on the 50 SMA. All right, let's go back to the two. And if we get a push over 600, we can uh, talk about a progression higher, but <clears throat> it's too early to talk about that yet. <clears throat> 10 a.m. low still holding. Come on, Russell. You need to pick up the pace. We need Russell over 1502, 1503 in order to start moving higher. In the indices in general. Dow and S&P are stronger today. <clears throat> uh, when we see a print of 80, 87, we're gonna lock and break even. We're getting the two minute rotation. Come on, we need to see that 85, 86 print. Choppy market environment, guys. Very choppy market environment. Uh, the SP idea once it trades over. 32, it will start progress higher to, it has a void from 32 to 34. Here we go with the two minute rotation. Come on, S&P. S&P needs to uh, break above 29.50 in order to start pushing. Come on, Russell, you can do it. We need to see all the indices in sync. If one of the indices will have relative weakness, it's gonna create a mess throughout the charts. We wanna see a progression in all the indices. By the way, guys, this was the first very, very aggressive trade. Remember, you do have the option to trade micros as well. Let me remind you that if you want to use micros, the symbol for the, uh, for, for the uh, micro in mini Dow is M-Y-M, -M, where 10 points is equivalent to five bucks, 100 points is 50 bucks.
Now we need 85. We need 85. If you guys are not in the trade, this is going to be a viable trade. It, uh, 585, this is going to be a 15 minute base. It's going to be five, with the trigger at 586. 586 by the same price, 535. That's with more confirmation. That's with more confirmation as part of a 15 minute buy. 586 by 535. Obviously we're in the trade, so I'm not gonna post it again. Uh, Bruce, I just noticed that you send me a question. I'm sorry, I just seen it right now. I send you the answer. Yes, my buy is at 75. Oh my, AMD is on fire. AMD on fire. Indices still sideways. Some stocks are really, really nice and uh, acting really well to the positive side. Still very early, we're still waiting. Remember, this is the prime time from 10.15 to about 10.40 where things start to trigger. I'm concerned about Russell. I'm gonna do a bit of analysis on Russell here because Russell not cooperating. Keep the hard stop at 35. We're not giving room. Keep the hard stop at 35. Uh, Russell is approaching danger zone at 1492. It's gonna trigger a daily reversal to the downside. That is a daily sell. There's also trading into an area of support at that same exact level into the 90 to 92. These patterns had maximum odds of working out, but because Russell is pointing lower here, there's no synchronicity. Back to YM. Uh, Ron, was that, was that what you were asking for? Russell has relative weakness. And uh, when you have an index that has relative weakness, it's not a good idea to get long in anything. And it's nice to sit on your hands and wait for another setup and wait until that index that has the relative weakness calibrates. And uh, you can see that the Dow right here, the S&P and NASDAQ, you can see how they're holding, they're very strong, they're holding their 10 a.m. lows. Uh, and uh, Russell is breaking the 10 a.m. lows. Look at the 10 a.m. lows right here. And it's trading on support, 92, 92 to 90 is support. Let's see here. 35 needs to hold. I don't trade something that has uh, uh, what I don't trade anything that has a bias on its own. If you took it, congrats, it doesn't fall into my trading plan, not even by 5%. Thank you. 
No, I don't think the stops are going to hold here. Keep the hard stop 35, no changes. Russell is approaching reaction zone here on the daily. And I like the fact that crew is coiling at that 61.8% fib here. This may be a possible long should the price continue to uh, continue over these highs. 52.20 to 52.50, that's gonna be the cluster decision for a possible long here in, uh, in crude. Crude has such a massive support zone here. Um, from the weekly, not only that it has a fib, let me show you. See these prior highs here uh, from, last, from last, actually from 2017 into the 52 zone. They're creating a lot of support for price action. So I really like this area, should it reverse from here? All right, we're getting the bounce in Russell. Like I said, that is the, it's approaching reaction zone. Keep that, keep that 35. This was a first very aggressive trade based on a five minute rotation, based on reversal time off of 10 a.m.
Keep the 35, hard stop. That's it. All right, we're done. Out. Let's just see how it's reacting to this. It's uh, actually a 15 minute sell sandwich, but it's trading right into minor support here. And the minor support zones are 535 to 515 and 500. Ten thirty, guys. We have the first one hour under our belt. Okay, first hour, thirty-minute bar has quite a considerable bottom, a topping tail, and we're still trading into a cushion of support between five hundred and five twenty-eight. My focus is right now is YM. All right, the 1030 lows are also as important as the 10 a.m. lows right here. So we have not breached by much. Russell is still into decision point from 92 to 90. Russell is trying to bottom out here. This might have been just a shakeout. Uh, Ron, what was the reason for order at 3.30 Monday? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by that.
Uh, what setup was used? It was a buy. I'm looking at, and this is another five minute aggressive rotation here at the five. Uh, let's see here. At the five, five, seven. Let's do it here, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on on it, hold on. So stay on my cue, I'm typing it, I'm releasing the parameters, don't take it yet. Don't take it yet, I'm not in yet. The stop is gonna be below the low of the day, so below 22. Stay on my queue. Don't take the trade yet. You take it on your own responsibility. I'm not in yet. Just wait. Just wait, don't take it yet. I typed in the parameters because for me, it's really hard to type in the parameters to take the trade on my, on my end as well. So the focus is YM. The real trade is actually over 82, but I wanna get in a bit earlier. 80, 15, seventy eight and eighty would be they're still aggressive.
and it's gonna have a bit wider stop, but you can actually use micros or whatever you choose, depending on your account size. See Russell how it messed up? Russell messed up everything, messed up the pattern. We're back into the 60s here. Shaken out of the trade. Shaken out of the trade. Anna, where's that French word? I'm not in yet. I'm looking at other parameters with confirmation this time, but still aggressive, still aggressive. <laughs> okay you know what i'm gonna do the, uh, okay i'm gonna type this in uh the 15 minute trigger is gonna be 580 by the law of the new york trading session so under 20 yeah for sure okay so i'm gonna release this but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a reaction into 80, pull back, and then rotate again. Okay, so I'm waiting for a pull back into the 85 zone because we've had like a, a bit of a move up. I mean, let's face it, 30 minute is in an uptrend. One hour is in an uptrend. Do I have any reason to short here? No. I don't have any reason to short. Okay, here we have, we have the 80 print. Now I want to pull back into the 560, hook into the 560 and then rotation and back up. I hate to start the day with a loss. Just freaking hate it. 15 minute rotation in progress right now. Let's see, it tr it's actually trading above 83. Don't you hate it? You have everything all sorted out. Everything, you have everything in a sink. Russell was the only one that was deceiving right here. But it did went into the key location and then it rotated off of that key location. It just messed up with us. And this is what Russell does. This is what Russell does. Shaken out. Luis, good job on this one. And keep the stop, uh, keep the stop at, uh, keep the stop at 19, 519. 517 or five, yeah, that, that should be, you should be good. I love that area. That area should hold. Good job on that because that's a five minute, uh, five minute, I'm sorry, 15 minute rotation at this point. over 80 it's uh and my plan now is to see how it handles this resistance and try to get a pullback so i don't risk a whole boat of you know um of points on my second trade right 
I knew it was going to go up. I just knew it. I just knew it. It was going to go up again. It was a matter of trying to hang out, but, but see how Russell messed up, messed up. It's chart correlation 101. Look at it go. This was our target. Okay, Luis, you're going to be looking for a 640, okay? <laughs> Dorothy, as much as I love that you are, <laughs> are um, learning from my losses, I'm very irritated that I got shaken out, okay? Uh, no, Cal, no, Louise, she's, uh, she's one of my traders, but she's taking the exact parameters and she knows where our stops are. She's a regular in our trading room. She knows the parameters. Okay, so she has been with us for a while and she knows our pattern of trading. And guys, this is just a heads up. If, you're use, if you see a white stop, don't be afraid to position size for micros. That's what they're for. You have a wider account size, you could take stops. You have a smaller account size, you take micros and you position size for that. You're going to be surprised how much money you make with micros. See the shakeout in oil? Guys, when we have oil participating, when we have Russell participating higher here, we get more momentum in the market and the shift is going for higher. I know, Herb. That's why these trades are aggressive because they do that. They do that, but at the same time, you really, you know, you really wanna have, you know, some sort of a, some sort of a stop in here because you're at that, point where you don't, you know, like I said, I'm moderately bullish for today. I'm not like 100% bullish, right? As long as we're holding the 30 minute trend, we have the one hour. Okay, let me just put the one hour here. This is the one hour chart. Do you see anything that is downtrending in this chart? Because I don't. I don't. The price is trading above the moving averages. This was a test, a retest, was the ECB, right? Press conference, the market digested the move. This is the support level into 512. And Cal, this is what Louise is looking for, right? She's looking for a support level right here into, the, in, into this area. She does not want to be shaken out of the trades because She's using a smaller size than her regular trading size. Okay, a regular size than the normal trading size. That's what micros are for. And you're gonna be surprised if, if you manage to make a hundred bucks on micros average per day. I'm not saying every day, but average, average per day. I don't know, today you make a hundred bucks, tomorrow you're gonna lose 50 bucks or a hundred bucks. And then you're gonna make 200 and then you're gonna make another hundred. If you average out a hundred bucks, well think what you're gonna have at the end of the month. It's over $2,000 using micros, just $100. That's a great supplemental income. And not using a lot of risk. That's right, Martin. That's right, Martin. Okay. Now, we had a retest of these highs. Okay. We have a retest of these highs into the 600. Okay. Uh, now, what we want to see. Okay. I was talking on a different chart. <laughs> All right, let's go to the two minute. Okay, so we have a retest of these highs right here. We also have the 200 SMA. We need to see the price peekaboo above this 200 SMA and stay there. 
okay? And that's going to create price velocity that may continue higher back into the uh, back into the 640, okay? Back into the 640. It's still a sideways range no matter how you look at it because this is the 10 a.m. high, okay? Let me just take some drawing tools here. This is the 10 a.m. high, and this is the 10 a.m. low, right? 10 a.m. high, 10 a.m. low. All right, according to the 10 a.m. rule, if the price breaks above the 10 a.m. high, it will continue higher. If it breaks the, the 10 a.m. low, you have to be aware of alternate support levels along the way, right? It doesn't necessarily mean short. In a downtrend, you short the 10 a.m. low. In an uptrend, you go long the 10 a.m. high, okay? But you're obviously looking for a setup within that, within that, uh, within this context, within this cluster. Yeah, so so again, uh, uh, Martin, I'm not really sure I understood your question, but we had a parameter here, long 580, uh, 580 by the low of the day, okay? And I said, wait, so I did not take it, okay? I did not take it even though it went higher, okay? I did not take it, it went to our target into, uh, into 600. And remember, um, I posted here in the room the targets for the trades, right? The targets, let me see if I find them. The initial trade, we got shaken out. Let me just repost them for everyone here to review, okay? These were the targets, 90, 60, 609. Look where it went to, 608. That's pretty precise for a target, don't you think so? but we got shaken out of the trade. We had our stop at 35 and it went to a low of 23. Okay, so we got shaken out of the trade. And that was because of Russell. Okay, let's not miss other opportunities here. Now we have to, we have to wait. There's nothing that we can do now. Very irritating, but we need to keep our calm. I don't have any additional entries. For those of you that got in on that, you know, 75, and if you're still in, or if you got into that 80s, good job, I'm not in. I got stopped out, I'm out. And uh, right now I'm waiting for, uh, for a next setup. That may come later today, because price is just pushing higher right now. Uh, Martin, that one, I, uh, that one I followed all the way. Yeah, you can see why I'm so irritated right now. You can see. And by the way, uh, further targets, 618. And from 618, the next target is going to be 635. Luis, this is for you and some of you guys that are still in this trade and have not been shaken out. And 650. And by the way, same, same concept applies to uh, the S&P. S&P and, uh, and the Dow are pretty much trading in the same structure. You can see that they're tapping into this high right here. I would actually like a pullback into the 590. Let's see if we could get it into the 590. I'm going to do it for a yes because I know a lot of you guys love to trade the mini S&P. The SMP is a little sluggish here. Uh, 
S and P is not ready yet to form another pullback buy. Uh, neither is Nasdaq. Yeah, we're going to watch it. RTY shakeout. Uh, let's see. See, RTY is just messing up everything here today again. RTY reaction zone, uh, like I said, it's from 90, uh, 92, actually 92, 94, and all the way to 90. So 94, 92, and 90, this, is this whole cluster here. See how it came into the 200 SMA and prior support, double bottom. By the way, guys, by the way, question, question for the room. Okay, question for the room. Do you think this is an uptrend or a downtrend? Uh, Dorothy, Chuck, you are right, and Ovidio, you are right too. Deborah, you're right. So we are trading within within a small uptrend here. Why? Because we had a series of higher highs and higher lows. And the recipe for an uptrend is to have at least a bottom and two higher highs and two higher lows. That is the confirmation for, it, for an uptrend. And so far we had it, right? We had the bottom here, one higher high, two higher highs, and then we had one higher low, two higher lows. And in fact, we have three higher lows right here, okay? So we're trying to build a web, uh, 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 an uptrend, right? We're trying to build an up, uptrend. Uh, we have a huge confluence zone here. We have the 200, uh, 200 SMA, right? We have the 200 SMA here. We have confluence zone from this prior high right here that is also creating minor support at this price action location. So it's imperative for the price to hold this area. Plus, we do have on the daily charts, right? On the daily chart, you can see that prior day's low this is the this is where we get the this is where we get the double bottom okay this is where we get the double bottom let me just check something here okay because i'm still watching my ym you know actively watching my ym okay so if we break the lows right if we break 92 to 90 so remember we still have solid support level there but we can initiate a more uh we can initiate more selling pressure and we can, we can initiate a sell that can result in more selling pressure in Russell. More selling pressure in Russell is not going to be constructive for any of the relative strength indices that we have, the Dow, the S&P, or even NASDAQ. Okay? So we don't have that. All right. So um, let's see here. 15 minutes. All right. 15 minutes, we managed to bounce off the double support zone. Look at the sloppy price action right here. So Russell is going to have to reach a decision between 90 and 92. If Russell is not going to hold the 90 to 92 level, there is a tradable void below all the way to 1475. So from 95 to 75, that would be more, uh, that would be more of a continuation lower. But it is imperative for these lows right here to hold. As long as these lows are going to hold here, we're not going to be discussing any short opportunities in Russell. All right. And as far as NASDAQ goes, okay, like I said, NASDAQ has a little bit of a weaker structure, but it's not that weak, right? Because let's take a look at the hourly chart. This is nothing but a sideways range, okay? We have the bottom here, 
rising low, rising bottom again, and double bottom right here, right at the 200 simple moving average, okay? This is the one hour chart. If within the next, let's say two minutes or so, price is gonna try to recoup the loss and try to advance into the 72.47 zone, price is gonna go higher. Okay, price is gonna go higher. It's gonna be part of an hourly reversal. 30 minute, constructive as well for the long side. Okay, that's why I'm saying it triggered a 30 minute buy into the 72.25, but you can see how it tapped onto the 20 SMA and the price got rejected. When you see the price trading in between moving averages, it's, uh, it's just like the price is trading within a spider's, you know, it's just like a spider's web, right? You get a fly that is caught into the spider's web. It's not flying anywhere, is it, right? It's caught there in the web, okay? It's caught in the web. So what this means is that the, pr the same thing with price. Once the price is tangled into moving averages, and especially on bid higher time frames, 30 minute, one hour, these are higher time frames for our date for for us as day traders. So once the price is tangled into these specific moving averages, price is not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna gyrate and it's gonna push forward and back, forward and back. It's gonna have like a yo-yo effect, right? Until the catalyst moves along whether you have some economic releases or a tweet or a news or anything that may come up or a stock or I don't know if there is anything that's going to go on with Boeing right now, if there's a, a, I don't know, press release, they're making improvements, they're, I don't know what they're doing with their uh, fleet or what, what have you. If there is any piece of information that will represent a catalyst for a specific stock that is heavyweight into uh, into the Dow component, you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see Dow move higher. Okay. Same thing with Nasdaq. If you ultimately had, and by the way, Google Inside Day it has been consolidated for the last three trading sessions. Uh, Amazon, likewise, it has been consolidating, still trading below the 200 simple moving average on the daily chart, okay? And as long as you still have these two uh, stocks that are heavy components, for instance, NVIDIA, also big component within NASDAQ, and it's trading in the latter half of, hey, Bernardo, <laughs> Bernardo thanks for stopping by of yesterday's price action, okay? It's not going to initiate higher. If you're having some daily reversals, uh, some weekly reversals within these very strong market stocks, then you can talk about an influx and a catalyst that may push the market, that may push the price a little bit higher. But what I'm seeing right now in all the indices is uh, more of uh, is more of a scalping territory today than anything else because it's a range bound market on a higher time frame, right? And we're talking about hourly time frame. To answer your question uh, about moving averages, and if I take uh, Dorothy, I think you've asked um, if I take signals off the moving averages. I think moving averages are a big component. Uh, into our trading and I wasn't a very big fan if you would have asked me about I don't know 15 years ago 20 years ago I was not a big fan about of, of moving of uh, using moving averages then uh, on my charts because I love to watch pure price action uh, and I, I would work more with fibs than any other moving average um, with the presence of algorithms in our trading environment, you have to be aware of moving averages. It is very easy for uh, programmers uh, to schedule buys or sell zones based on these moving averages on charts. Charts cannot move any longer on fundamentals. Oftentimes you see stocks that are, uh, you know, have good guidance, good earnings, and they, uh, they move lower, right? So they, even though they come up with a pretty good uh, pretty good numbers. You can see that the price is pressing lower. That's because they're already setting up into a sell zone, right? 
uh, and the algos are picking up a price, pushing it either lower or higher. There are algos that are programmed, but that's a different discussion about algos. Um, these algos are getting, um, uh, there are some algos that are reacting on small time frames with small price, with small prices based on a couple of points or even, uh, or even a couple of ticks. And they, the fact that there are different algos out there that are programmed through different, on different chart structures, some are acting off uh, and by the way, some of the popular algos are reacting off the 20 uh, simple moving average, the 200 simple moving average, the 50 simple moving average. And uh, for dynamic trading, that is when you get an aggressive move to the upside or an aggressive move to the downside, you're also going to see aggressive uh, moves off the 10 exponential moving average for day trading. The 10 exponential moving average is also important uh, on uh, higher time frames than that is for swing trading, but we're talking more today about, uh, about day trading and the reaction off of this. So it is very easy to program based on these moving averages. That's why you were, you know, and yesterday we laughed, we were looking at CNBC and I was like, if you were watching and I'm pretty sure that you guys here have been, you know, some of you guys may have been trading for a long time and may have been uh, uh, in the market for, I, I don't know, maybe 10 years, 15 years or so. If any of you guys have been trading back then, and if you would have watched CNBC or Bloomberg or whatever, um, uh, whatever um, um, uh, market media outlet you would, have, uh, uh, you would have watched, they would not even bring up a fib chart they would not even talk about a technical chart how many times if you've been watching like i don't know 10 15 years ago how many times have you seen a chart a technical chart like i and i have been trading for a very long time and i can tell you that i've been watching cnbc and i have not seen technical charts all i hear i've heard kramer kramer was all about fundamentals and now kramer is all about technicals right they they bring uh they bring uh, analysts on they bring charts on they draw fit they draw trend lines they draw they pay attention to moving averages they pay attention to this because trading has become extremely technical it is an algo dominated uh field um, more than 85% of the market volume is generated by algorithmic trading and more and more uh, you're going to witness more and more volatility as we're going into uh, as we're going into the year and as we're progressing in our trading careers and to these charts so things are gonna become you know pretty much pretty much what we're trading right now is going to be the norm from now on I don't think there's the, the volatility is gonna subside. I just think that we have to get used to volatility and we have. As futures traders, we have, a, uh, we have now an added advantage because um, we have been, uh, we have been uh, uh, let's say lucky enough uh, that uh, we have been issued these micros where you can position size, even if you have it. So now you can participate in buying the dips in the market, okay? In buying the dips in the market, um, where this was not possible for small accounts until about a month ago, okay? Very nice progression into YM right now. So YM uh, and even NASDAQ, I've been watching these charts, one hour 38 uh by 7200 very nice progression let's do a uh, top down again because we're trading into the top of the hour and uh the, <laughs> excuse me ym very nice almost trading above the prior high and i think this is going to be more of a trend trade here uh going into the afternoon trading session 620 by 520, 620 by, this is gonna be a hundred point. This can be used with uh, with micros. Again, it's aggressive, so it's not for all the traders. Let's continue to watch these parameters. A mini S&P is also approaching the highs here. 
S&P trigger on the one hour is going to be 28.34. This is for a trend trade for the duration of lunch. The risk is going to be 28.23. You can use micros again to position size, whether you want to use 50 bucks, 100 bucks for your risk or $5,000 for your risk. Now you, can do, now you can do this. RTY, last but not least, is still getting, uh, is still getting its reaction, doing shakeouts off of the 200 simple moving average. Ron, it's not moving lower, it's just reacting off of this 200 moving average here into the 94, okay? Let's take a look at the 30 minute structure since this is a damage, a damage structure, it's just pulling traders in short, just uh, messing around with traders here. All right, and let's check out the 15 minute. If the 15 minute is gonna trade over 99, 14.99, you're gonna see Russell uh, move back up into the 15.04 to 15.05 level. All right. All right, let's continue to do some active watches right now. <clears throat> like I said, there are uh, 30 minute and hourly reversals that are in progress right now. I'm being extra careful because I have a stop, right? So I typically want to see a tighter, tighter stop for my day trade, but I like this for throughout the lunch period and I have 30 minute continuation and I'm going to have a one hour trigger here, which is really awesome. Okay. Man, did we get ever get shaken out of that trade? A lot of support here in Russell on the four hour. No shorting in Russell here. Russell is gonna rotate for higher. But I don't see a really good buy here. It's, it, it, and you don't buy something that has relative weakness. <clears throat> yeah, as long as 90 to 92 is holding, we're not going to be looking for any kind of shorts. And by the way, all the indices, uh, YMES, and well, except for Russell, uh, the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ are, are setting up a bull flag, a bull flag um, structure on the one hour chart with a continuation higher. And YM higher target, YM has room for, for 720. <coughs> we talked about this uh, 720 to 750. So it's trading right now into the resistance area from uh, the overnight trading session. We had one, two, three, four, five hours in which uh, where the price has consolidated there. <coughs> Brad, did you manage to get some Walmart yesterday? It's up over 1% today. I'm also looking to add to the Cisco, but uh, not yet. Oh, good job, Brad. Good, good job on, uh, on Walmart. 
By the way, bonds are trying to reverse here. Very interesting, over 154.10. Chop fest continuing. This is a perfect example of a divergent uh, divergent index today. You can see that the Dow, uh, you can see that Russell is down 0.72% and why it would have been right now at 700 had it been for Russell. Luis, you're still in, right? Luis, you're you're pretty much gonna stay in. Um to like seven fifteen. Seven fifteen, seven twenty. Approaching very quickly the, the highs here in the Dow and the mini SMP. Such a bummer with this YM. Okay, no use on dwelling. That was the perfect entry there, but it had to have an open stop. Uh, okay, TA. Oh, it doesn't have an entry. It's just a runaway. Yeah, it's it's just. Uh, th did it have news or anything? I would not approach it at all. No entry on the monthly. No entry on the weekly. No daily. It, it, it's a run. The entry was one eleven fifty. a bit lower volume that's why probably I don't have it on didn't have it on my radar trading 887,000 shares and it's trading into resistance just popped over resistance here um, Watch it into 111.50. Into 111.50. AMD working very nice. Uh, financials are Financials are trying to break out. Let's see. Financials are trying to break out. Over 27.20. Over 27.20, they have room to 28. If 
financials are nice. Uh, Boeing going, uh, going up, recouping some of the losses today. Apple inside day today. Micron a little bit weak. Let's check out Disney. Disney is nice too. Uh, over 136, 136.50, this is the trigger right here. I'm gonna get some Disney. Soft stop into 130, target into 140, and we're, we're, gonna, be, we're gonna be managing it along the way. I'm missing these indices. Russell is gonna go up, uh, go up right here. Took everybody down, pulled everybody in here for a possible short and no, it's rotating. It's trading on key level. We didn't have a pull back to that 620 level that I was watching. No entries. Uh, targets on ES, Jose. Oops, I don't know what I'm doing here. All right, um, 140. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 40, but before 40, you have another target into 37, 37 and then 40. No, 37, 38 and 40, 37, 38 and 40. We just had that one hour rotation. Still watching. I wanna see how it handles this 33. You could, you could trade this and this is an idea. You could trade these with micros. Uh, you could have 33 by 23, obviously under 23. So that would be a four point if you want to trade it. I don't know, small accounts if you want to take 100. And by the way, these uh, one hour uh, trades that are setting up, they have, uh, they have a better potential of working because the, there is an additional substantial support off of these, uh, off of these charts, okay? Additional support off of these charts. So the support level is, definitely more is definitely stronger than what you have on your one minute, two minute and whatever you could get, you know, a lot of times shaken out. In fact, the first trade that we took was a five minute rotation was in a, in a very aggressive, extremely aggressive trade off the open in a sideways market. Okay. So this is what we did here. This is the first trade that we took. And it was into uh, into that full reversal time. Oops, where, where was it? I'm sorry, it was a five minute. I have a 15 minute chart up. Okay, 
So let's examine what we've done here, okay? So it was into 10 o'clock. This was the trade that we took here into the 75, right? This was the 75. It pushed a little bit higher, but we were still trading into a range bound market, okay? And I often say in the trading room, if we're trading in a range bound market, okay, setups that develop within ranges are extremely aggressive, okay? Because we wanna see the breakout above the range. And we finally have the breakout above the range, above the 10 a.m. high, which is the 620 level, all right? So while I was watching the breakout over the 620 level and you wanna see the price progress higher, and then the next thing that you wanna see is you wanna see a pullback that is setting up, oh, uh, that is setting up into the breakout area. And that may represent a more conservative buy, right? But don't forget one thing, we're navigating away from the prime time. So that's why I was very aggressive this morning on this five minute rotation because I saw the possibility of a pop a little bit higher. And actually this was the time at 10 o'clock when we were trying to bottom out here into Russell, okay? We were trying to bottom out here into Russell. So we got that push higher, okay? We got that initial push higher from the setup and then we failed and we got shaken out of trades. Shake out 101, all right? We had our stop at 535. It went all the way to 523. We got shaken out. We did not. And when you're getting shaken out of trade, you want to reevaluate the whole entire structure of the market. And at that point, we had a breakdown in Russell for hire to retest this 90, 94 to 90 area. It's a cluster from 90 to 94. It's like, it's like a mattress, right? So think about support levels as mattresses, right? They're not like thin lines that you draw on a chart like you have right here. And man, this is the support line that needs to hold the exact price. No, they have a cushion. Oftentimes the cushion is wide depending on market volatility. And a lot of times, uh, and a lot of times, uh, you, know, um, um, you know, these levels are tighter. When you have price, when you have multiple, uh, support levels at that price, whether you have a FIB, a moving average prior uh, resistance that develops into a minor support zone. So uh, you have to have a whole lot of elements uh, for that tighter range. And when you have that, then you have that confirmation to go full throttle long. Okay. Um, so uh, as of right now, we're going to sit, watch, and if a trade comes our way, remember, we need to see price action and see how price action is dictating uh, is dictating uh, the next possible move. So when I'm watching, see, I'm watching a pullback into the 615 zone. Does this mean this is a buy? No, it's not a guaranteed buy. You need to see how the price action is structuring into this location, right? We're not algos and we're not going to buy off the 10 EMA here, okay? We're not going to do that because we don't... Here's the thing with, uh, uh, with these aggressive buys off, uh, off of these moving averages. The reality is that if you buy every single time off of support level and off of moving average or you know, price support or a FIB or et cetera, whatever the level may be, you're going to have a lot of stopouts. You can use tight stops, but you're gonna have a, a stopout galore. Okay, versus waiting for a setup. When you're waiting for a setup, and this is what algorithm, this is the difference between us and algorithmic trading, that we have the upper hand because we're not racking up losses after losses, even though they're small, they end up as being big losses at the end of the month because they rack up a lot of commissions, they rack up a lot of, uh, they rack up those small losses become, become a big loss. It versus waiting for the price confirmation. What is the price confirmation? You're waiting for a setup to develop. This is what something that algos cannot do yet. They cannot trace setups because only humans are capable of identifying the setups. All right? So algos can buy off support, can buy off a moving average, can buy off of this, right? Or that or whatever the, whatever the scenario may be but they cannot do the setups. And this is where human intervention is best because you're not gonna be racking up commissions. You're not gonna be racking up uh, small losses that end up in big losses at the end of the month, right? And this allows you to better position size, allows you to, uh, to go for better, uh, for better targets, okay? 
So now we're trading into resistance. We're back into the highs. Um, and like we said in the pre-market game plan, we're still moderately bullish on this move. And the structure is still very strong and is still looking for a continuation higher. Now, the problem is that we need to see a setup develop uh, for us to get into an, another trade. Okay. And typically, and look at the bottoming effect right here. First of all, right now, we need to see a print of 90, 97. Okay, let's put an alert here. When we get this, I don't want to buy Russell. I don't want to mess around with Russell. Okay, I'm going to use it as a gauge. And this is what I typically do. Sometimes I trade Russell when it's, you know, pretty much in sync with the market indices. But when you get this divergency, when you have one index that is negative, it's uh, 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 10 points down. And when you have... 80 points up into YM, you have seven points up in the S&P, you have uh, 18 points up in NASDAQ, what are you gonna do, okay? So you're seeing a divergent market, so obviously I'm gonna stick with the long side because ultimately Russell is gonna understand that we're moving higher, so it's gonna follow along. It's gonna, it's gonna be the last one to follow, so that's why it's not gonna be a good idea to actually go long Russell now on a potential market weakness and if Russell is gonna break below 90. So I said it from this morning, from nine o'clock when we started the pre-market game plan. If Russell breaks 90, then I'm gonna look and evaluate. I'm gonna look for a pressure lower and I'm gonna look for a pullback that sets resistance into the 90 to start selling it. I'm not gonna do anything otherwise because Russell can be the one index that is gonna rip your face off. It goes up with vengeance and it goes down with vengeance and that's what it's doing. Okay, um, if you're, uh, I mean, I'm not even gonna say it, but um, again, we're, we're really closing in at, that, at this, uh, at this uh, uh, 657 here, which is uh, closing in on that weekly reversal right here, a uh, weekly trigger to buy. And this is gonna be a monster buy here that is gonna create a lot of buying pressure to the upside into the 26K and 26200 moving into tomorrow's trading session. Okay, so I really like YM. YM right now has more relative strength than even the S&P structure. Uh, the S&P structure, let's take a look at the daily, still has a little bit of room into the 42s, trading right now at the 35s. Here it is, Russell getting the rotation for higher. For those of you that like counter trending, okay, that like counter trading, like I said, I would never trade Russell because it has relative weakness, but this can be, this is exactly how counter trend trades are. So you could take it long into the 1497, having a stop at 1491. And sorry if you guys are hearing some noises, just the lawn people here, just cutting the lawn. So I'm sorry about that. I can't do anything about that. Okay. It's uh, like they were doing extra trim, uh, um, uh, uh, tree trimming and all that stuff. You know, they're prepping for hurricane season and all that stuff. So anyways, um, we're, we're seeing a dynamic price action with sort of like a nice bottom here. One thing that I forgot to mention here when I was looking at the one hour chart and some of you guys may be into patterns, okay? All right, this is a, a, a cup and handle pattern. So this is bullish over 1513. If the price should recoup over 1510 or 1513, this is gonna blast higher. Okay, it's definitely gonna blast hard. This is a cup, rounded bottom, and this is um, um, the handle. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Keith. Don't forget that we have a brand new class, Keith, on, um, it starts uh, June 17th. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Uh, Ron, criteria for buys, day lows, or trend lines, or support, which works best? All work. So you have, well, if you're using, I, I typically use trend lines, but right now we're not really in that trend line scenario because we're in a choppy market environment. So we're not respecting, a, 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 you know, we're not really respecting a, a trend per se. We, we're into that, um, I know, I'm looking for uh, for the name of it's a turbulent zone. Okay, never mind. So um, I'll remember. Um, so we're still in a turbulent zone. We had that volatility 
move lower in all the indices over the last uh, over the last four weeks. So we had that red month, uh, and now we're re now we're trying to maintain the weekly, uh, and we're trying to maintain the monthly um, um, uptrend. Okay, so if you I, 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 it's not the case for trend lines right here. What I typically look is for higher highs and higher lows on one hour, four hour charts. Uh, obviously, I wanna have the participation of the daily, participation of the weekly, because that's gonna create the full throttle for higher and confirmation for higher. I look for pullback buys and pullback sells. I look for pullback buys and uptrends, and right now, uh, in the pre-market game plan, I mentioned the fact that we are still in moderate bullish environment because we are respecting the higher highs and higher lows, okay? And uh, I'm only entering shorts in downtrends. I, we're not in a downtrend now. We're not in any kind of downtrend. This is a very bullish market environment, <laughs> and, uh, and that's one of the reasons even for Russell, I don't want to short it here. It had... A lot of support at the 1499 and it had a lot of support at the 1494 zone so I'm not shorting anything that has this uh, this structure because it's still maintaining the uptrend so I don't want to I don't want to trade against the major trends into the market uh, I hope this answers your question if you want me to elaborate more specifically on anything that you may uh, have an interest in just feel free to type it in here uh, how much room, Jane, uh, how much room do you see in NASDAQ uh, 7210, uh, the support from London session low, heading to 7259? Okay, let's take a quick look. And let me bring this here. And uh, let's uh, quickly look at the daily. No, let me just look at the weekly first. Uh, well, See, let's type in the symbol. That always helps, right? <laughs> All right, so um, first target was 72.33. We can see that it is trading into the 50s right now. And the second target is into the 75, 72.75. That's the next target. Then it has a tradable void all the way into the 7300. Now let's take it a step lower, okay? So let's zoom in, all right? Let's zoom in and let's see what we have going on. Pretty much same cop and handle. If you guys are into identifying patterns, okay? This is, this is something that, you know, um, something that you can actually observe here. It's a cup and handle uh, or it's, it's a rounded bottom with a lift uh, in support level into the 7160 additional support and by the way this is really nice support here off the 200 SMA and the breakout Jane uh, really nice into the 72 uh, 7200 also confluent zone and we're approaching a golden cross here so this is very bullish for NASDAQ at this point uh, obviously the next target that I see is into this prior high of 7260 that is coming from uh, from the um, uh, from the London session. No, I'm sorry, from the uh, from the uh, New York trading set. What what's this? No, from the London session high. Okay, from the London session high. So you're looking for a revisit into the 72 uh, 72 64 65. It does have additional room to. Uh, uh, it does have additional additional room to the 80s, 80 and 85. And remember that 85 is going to be also a problem zone. So you can expect turbulence and a pullback into the 70 to 80 zone. First target is into resistance. Now, depending on how the price is reacting into resistance, if we get a range through lunch, uh, we may be able to pay, play some breakouts after 2, 2 p.m. Eastern. I don't trade the doldrums from, from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. I don't trade. I take a break. Uh, and it's healthy to take a break from the charts because we were staring at all these screens and all these monitors and it's not healthy for you to do that. Uh, plus your attention is spiked at the maximum level. So it's really nice to step away, go for a walk and do some activities outside or something. All right, so 72, uh, 72.65 is resistance right here. 
and it has that little bit of room into uh, into the 80s. 80 is going to be a big decision point because it's a big confluence zone. It's also deriving from these prior lows right here that were that are creating a selling pressure. But if we base strongly into the highs, we may see some uh, buying pressure building into um, into this zone that can carry the price into the 73 uh, 7300. Uh, as far as trailing goes, uh, as far as trailing goes, I, I, I would actually start locking in, uh, locking in the 7235. Uh, I don't really want to um, be complacent at this point within this pattern because you want to chunk in some, uh, some gains at this point. Uh, so I would use a trail stop of 72.35 I would, and I would just let it go. Um, if the price is going to get into the 72.60 area and if it's going to base into that area, you could actually leg back in and you can lift the price into the new established, I would say, I don't know, 15, 30 minutes of board zone if we should get a range at that point. Uh, Jack? Uh, how did you know when the Russell began to find its bottom? Well, it's very easy. You have it here on the one hour chart. It's a double bottom, right? And you have a confluence zone. You have uh, a conf the confluence zone is deriving from these prior lows from yesterday's trading session, along with the 200 simple moving average on the one hour chart, right? And this is an active watch for day traders. Uh, along with swing traders, it's that sweet spot that delivers information for the for day traders and also information for swing traders. And uh, you're expecting a reaction at this point. Plus, uh, very important, the daily, right? Yesterday we had a doji and yesterday's low is into the 92, right? And you have that double bottom effect right here. So it is imperative if, that, if, if 92 to 90 does, uh, uh, does not hold, right? then you're looking for further continuation lower, but you're not gonna take the first set, uh, first sell setup that occurs because you have divergent indices, right? These indices that are on top, NASDAQ, S&P, and YM, uh, are into a very solid, uh, very solid strong structure. So they're not indicating that they're giving up profits, they're, they're indicating that they have may continue the momentum for higher. So that's not going to give you a good bias on the short. So the best odd for the short would be to wait for that 90 level to be breached. Wait for it. Just, just sit on your hands and just wait. Just look at the, uh, look at the charts uh, and look at the candles. Just continue to move lower. Let them find support. In the meantime, you do absolutely nothing. You just watch. That's what you do. That's your job as a trader. Your job as a trader is not to push buttons. It's just to watch the market, to watch for setups, to watch for um, uh, to watch for possible um, patterns. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that if it breaks 90, let it go, let it go, and then wait to see a pattern develop. Because if you get a breakdown and if the price is going to get to 83 or 84 or even to 80, any pullback into 90, that's going to be your short okay with confirmation okay and that's one of the good things about using confirmation for your trades a lot of traders want to make their life easy and like to call trades off moving averages i'm not saying that's a bad thing okay but at the end even if you're going to say yeah i'm going to take i don't know i'm going to take the s p off the 20 uh 20 simple moving average on the i don't know what time frame and I'm going to give it, I don't know, a three-point stop or a five-point stop or whatever the stop may be, I don't care. You have a high incidence of stopping out because the reality is that if you have a program and if you have an unlimited budget, yeah, you can take all the trades. But if you have a calculated budget, it's better off to watch, you know, how the price develops versus, you know, just buying it blindly off of a moving average. I hope that answered uh, your question. Okay. All right. Um, let's go back. Let's go back to the five minute charts. 
Five minute, no setup yet. Five minute, no setup yet. Notice the notice a bit of weakness here in Russell because it's it's just uh, it just didn't really trigger into this prior high. We have an alert at ninety eight, and we want to see ninety eight. Uh, we want to see a print of ninety eight point seven or ninety nine before the price starts moving higher, and that's going to create more velocity for uh, YMES and Nasdaq. And you can see that. Crude is still coiling around the 61.8%. If crude is going to pick up the pace and trade above these highs here, at least over 52, okay, first off over 52 or at least 51.90, you're going to see more buying pressure coming into the S&P, coming into YM, et cetera, et cetera. The fact that today we have some uh, relative strength into these indices is because the Dow stocks are behaving uh, pretty well in today's trading session uh and also we have financials that are that are not giving up they have inside days and this is giving a, a moderately bullish uh a structure to, to the s p which is a financial rich um index okay which is a financial weak index Dorothy, do you prefer one particular time frame to trade from once you enter the trade? I do. Uh, the time frame that, and, and this is this is a rule. You cannot bend this rule. The time frame where you enter the trade, that's the time frame where you manage the trade. That's the time frame where you position size for the trade. That is your trading decision. Okay, that is definitely your trading decision. Here it is, six fifteen and into the Dow pulling back and we're getting Russell back into the lows right here. So remember the plan for Russell is re relatively easy and it's simple. We need to see it break 92, let it plummet to, I don't know, 84, 85, where it wants to find its own support zone. And then look for a pullback where you can sell because it is entering a, sh it is entering a short territory, okay? Now remember, things are the most complicated days to trade and uh, are days like today. And I'm not just saying this lightly. These are extremely complicated days where you have heavy divergency. You have one week index, you have uh, other relative strength in indices, right? When you're having synchronicity throughout the board, you just throw a dart, you can trade whatever you want to the long side or whatever you want to the short side. You wanna, you don't even have to look you know, at relative strength or weakness. You just throw a dart, they're all moving in sync. But when you have an index that is, has red and has a weak uh, structure that we talked about, and then when you have all these indices that are trying to push higher and they're setting up both flags on the hour, into the one hour time frames, you know, <coughs> you know uh, things, are, uh, things are a little bit more difficult, okay? Um, I don't know if this is going to be uh, if, if this is going to be the top. Definitely, Nasdaq right now, where Nasdaq is trading, is trading right into the ten exponential moving average onto the daily. I'm just gonna do a quick rundown on my multi time frames. Um, we're trading into the twenty SMA, into the ES and uh, the S and P five hundred, and uh, we have triggered a one hour reversal. So let's see how uh, how we hold so far. Uh, one hour support in uh, S and P is twenty eight twenty eight. Let's see how we hold that area. Finally, we're getting a bit of uh, movement to the downside. The five minute is suggesting that we have a low, higher low. Let's see if we're getting a higher low here or we're. Uh, getting an equal low into the 28. A breach of 28 may see some more selling pressure back to the 24. I couldn't pick a more difficult day to trade with you guys. <laughs> All right, so we're getting more selling pressure here.
All right, let me know if you guys have any other questions as we're waiting for, uh, for something to develop. We're, we have 10 more minutes uh, into the top of the hour and then we're gonna do the morning wrap. <clears throat> We have initiated the cell into Russell right here, daily cell. Eighty eight is support. Eighty two is support as well. Let it just go down and then we're uh, we'll see where it finds a bottom and now The pullback area, it's still very early to put an alert yet in. See, let's cancel these, these are not valid anymore. Okay, and we have the first cluster here, let it move down. And Dorothy, about the time frame, one uh, small um, ad here in regards to the time frame. Um, in the morning, I specifically watch the one and the two minute charts. And as I'm progressing through the day, I like to expand to my five minute. So after 10 o'clock, my attention goes to the five minute. Hence the trade, the first trade that we took, the only trade actually that we took, uh, was based on the five minute, five minute buy reversal into support. David, that's a great question. Uh, you trade options, you're new to futures. What is the benefit of trading index futures versus trading options on the indices? Um, I don't do option on the indices. There are a lot of traders that are doing this successfully. I, however, like to have a better gauge of price, lock in profits, et cetera, et cetera. So if the, the, the difference here is that if you have a very, 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 very small account size, and this was valid before the CME issued uh, the EMD micros, uh, a very small account holders were more attracted to the to the uh, uh, futures uh, uh, futures indices uh, because uh, because of their account size. Okay. Um, to me, trading options, um, I wouldn't want to say this so you guys take it the wrong way. Uh, I'm not a fan of trading uh, options. Uh, and, and here's the thing. I sometimes trade options in IWM uh, or in the, uh, the S&P 500 sometimes. When I trade, uh, when I trade mostly options, I trade on high ticket items, high priced items such as Google, Amazon, uh, I don't know, stocks that are, that, that, are, uh, uh, that are high priced, okay? And that would lock in a lot of my, uh, a lot of my capital. When you don't want to lock in a lot of capital, then you trade, uh, then you trade, you know, these kinds of, these kinds of options. You have, uh, you have way better odds of succeeding in trading if you trade the common stock, if you trade like day trades the stock day, or swing trade the stock or actively invest own the stock or the index than you are with options. You need the price to go farther a lot more, okay? So you need a lot of volatility to achieve your target, okay? But now you do have the possibility to trade, uh, even, you know, to trade even, to day trade and to swing trade, even if you have a small account, because you can use micros, okay? You can use micros. Micros are a great way, um, great way to, uh, to trade the futures market. Amazing way to trade the futures market. Amazing way. 
A lot of trade, and here's the thing, micros are not for scalping, okay? There's one thing, micros are not for scalping. They are for complete day trades like we took today, okay? And YM, for instance, you could have used micros and you can position size. So let's say we had a risk of $200. By the way, my average risk per trade per contract and it's up to you how you position size. I look at setups that develop between $200 and $250 per contract. And then I position size. And it's up to you whether you want to position. And it, it, again, it's in strict correlation with your account size. If you have a small account size, I don't know, if you have a $5,000 account size, you trade micros. You have a bigger account size, $10,000 plus. 20,000, 50,000, 80,000, you trade the full contract. If you have a bigger account size, over ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 or so, you, you could not participate in any swing trade activities or wider stops or volatile moves until now. Now you could do it via micros. Um, so I hope that answered your question. So David, if you have a choice, trade the stock or trade the index, okay? You're gonna, it, it, and you can do a comparison, okay? Uh, just use a simulated account. Trust me, all the time that you invest in a simulated account is time gained perfecting your trading, okay? Perfecting your trading. A lot of traders go full throttle into a live account. No, perfect your trading. And have two simulated accounts, okay? Have two simulated accounts. Take the day trade or the swing trade in one account and take your options trade in a separate account. And at the end of the day, see what you do and what you do. And you know, over time and analyze this trade, but don't give up on the system. So do this analysis for at least two to three months and evaluate it after a quarter. Because no system, it depends on market environment. If you're getting a choppy env environment, you're gonna get whipped around. I've been whipped around. Everybody gets whipped around when you're, and especially, you know, the other thing is that in swing trading, you may use flex stops. You, you have a whole different handle uh, on, um, on trading. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, Jack, is it any more difficult for you to trade agricultural markets than the indices on the board now? Uh, one of this would be watch for the overall agricultural markets. Oh, I trade anything, okay? Jack, I trade anything. Technical analysis is, is the basis of everything. You, you, I could trade, uh, and I don't know, Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies. You do the same analysis on everything. Uh, I do watch. In fact, right now you're having a buy set up for a swing long in wheat, okay? Let me just bring the chart right here, okay? I don't think we're gonna be taking any day trades going into lunch, okay? So I'm gonna be doing this. All right, and good point. Good point, Jack, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna to go to wheat. I do look at agriculture. Unfortunately, you cannot trade agricultural products every week or every, I don't do them for day trading purposes, okay? So this is something that I don't. I like to think that, um, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna become a really good, and I'm gonna tell you a little story here. If you wanna be a really good trader, you know, you gotta think like a market maker thinks, right? So you gotta specialize in one or two or three, let's say, elements, right? So for me, I choose, uh, I choose the indices. They're my bread and butter. That's how I earn my living every day. Uh, and trust me when I tell you this, but I would rather trade than teach a class. And, uh, you know, that's a good example because I taught a class in January and, uh, you know, uh, we record, we record the classes and the next class is right now in June because I like to trade most of the time. And then I want to, you know, I like to enjoy my day off, you know, after four o'clock, I want to take off. I, I don't want to be stuck in, you know, teaching a class. But uh, what I'm saying is that you have to be super focused on, on some elements, on very few elements in order to excel at what you're doing. 
That's why a cardiologist is not taking consultations for foot pain <laughs> or for, I don't know, for sore throat. They specialize in a, in a certain field. And there are very strong similarities between trading and becoming a physician, right? Because like when you're, you know, when you're a physician, right? What do you do? You go to school and then you go to school and then you go to school and then you follow a residency program. I have a lot of friends that are, uh, that are doctors and traders. They make very good traders. And uh, so they don't, you know, after they finish school, they don't go and perform brain surgery, okay? They work with uh, another doctor or group of doctors, right? When they do the residency program. The residency program is equivalent to paper trading, right? It's equivalent to paper trading, okay? So just wanted to make this adage here. So uh, we were talking about agricultural products. I don't day trade them because it would be like going back to stock day trading. I used to day trade stocks for many, many, many years. I think like 17 years or so, actively day trading stocks, day trading stocks, day trading stocks, right? I don't do that anymore, okay? I don't day trade stocks anymore because there's a lot of work involved. I want to simplify my trading. I want to simplify my life, you know? I'm at that point where, you know, uh, if I make 20 or 30 points in the market with proper size, I'm good for the day, you know? I'm good for the day. I don't, I don't want to work extra to make my income. So, uh, and I love trading. So I specialize in the indices. When you're trading stocks, you got to use a scanner. Otherwise you're all scattered, watch list, whatever. I, I use trade ideas as a scanner. I still use it for my swing trading purposes so I can have a good feel of the market breadth and all that fun stuff. Okay. But, um, okay. Let me take, take this to the daily right here. Okay, um, so there's a lot of work involved. Gaps, right? There's a lot of homework that you do in gaps. You have to be in. You have to be. Uh, you have to be in the market. You know. You have to. Uh, you know. Evaluate. Uh, you evaluate the gaps. Look at the market structure. Again, look at the market structure. The one common denominator. If you're trading stocks or whatever or ETFs, what do you do? You look at. The market structure, right? You look at the Qs, you look at the spies, you look at the diamonds, right? At the Dow. So you have to look at all these indices. How about just looking at the indices and just trading the indices, right? And then using the stocks to see which is the best performer within a sector, within the index. You know, that's a that's a, that's a simplified method of trading. Okay, so. Um, Going back to wheat, okay, yeah, I do look at agricultural products, but I look them for swing trading and investing purposes. I don't day trade them. First of all, they have, they have low volume, okay? Some of them have low volume. Uh, not often do they get the big influx, right, of volume. So I'm not a big fan, okay, of trading agricultural products like wheat or corn or whatever, not unless they're trading not unless they're uh, not unless they're setting up some really good, solid, um, um, uh, solid uh, uh, setups. So what we have in weed right now is we had a bounce off the bottom. Notice this uh, bottom. Uh, notice this bottom right here on three eleven. What do we do here? Did we break support? No, we tested support. We went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What, what this was, shakeout. What happened to us today, shakeout. The same thing happened here. So if you were a trader that was trying to buy this reversal or this reversal right here, right? Or trading the breakout uh, over 448 and you had a stop, you had a stop below this low with two, uh, 426, you would have been shaken out. You could see the chart right here, 418. It happens. It's part of the business. Shakeouts are part of the plan. Stopouts are part of the plan. If you can't stomach a paper cut, you're not meant for trading. You should give it up. If you can't stomach a loss, if you can't stomach, you know, if the market goes against you, if you have, if you, you may be on a losing streak, 
trading is not for you. Invest elsewhere. You could invest in real estate or whatever you want. Anything else than the stock market. The stock market is a roller coaster and it is not for the faint of heart. Okay? So I like to watch, let's say, wheat. Wheat is, into a, wheat is actually into a daily buy, right? The, the trigger came over 508. 508, uh, uh, five, here it is, the high. Let me give you the exact number, 508.50. And the risk for this trade is 487. All right? It has the potential to run back into the 520 and back into the 526. All right, let's take a look at corn. Okay, corn bottoming tip. Look at the shakeout in corn. Shakeout in corn. Support into the 412. Price went into the 416. And by the way, when I trade agricultural products, if I trade agricultural products, I like to give them a soft stop, which means a, a mental stop. And I have a whole strategy on how to tighten that stop after the shakeout occurs. I teach that in our class. Okay, and how to how to go about that. And even that's a strategy for day trading as well. In some day trades, we do have soft stops. In some day tradings, we do have, in some day trades, we do have soft stops. Not many, but some. All right. Uh, the trigger for corn, if you're looking for a long throughout the trading session today, five, 425. 425 may be the push for higher into, back into these highs, into the 436. Um, I also look at copper and copper. Uh, I don't day trade copper and this is personal preference, personal preference. I think that copper is not gonna be ready to commit even if you're looking at technical levels. And by the way, it's super appealing right here if you're watching it from a weekly perspective or even a monthly perspective. I mean, this is really, really nice. I'm gonna be watching this actually into next week if we close uh, in a doji. Uh, on Monday, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, sometime if we trade over 2.6745, I would like it higher, okay, for a swing higher with the risk into the 260, okay, risk 260. Entry to uh, over, over uh, 2.675, stop 260. This is what I like. We haven't had a doji in like forever. Okay, we have a nice, we had a nice bottoming tail here that initiated in a rally. Look at the doji here, reversal up. And besides, we're on to the 200 simple moving average on the weekly chart. Okay, did that answer your question? Uh, okay, let me see if I have any other questions here. Um, How about Forex? Martin, that's a good question. I used to trade Forex a lot. In fact, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is the youtube.com forward slash trade out loud, you will see analysis that I was doing back in 2000. I don't know. I think it was 2010, 2013. I tried to delete some of them to clear up the space because if I trade, uh, if I trade any, uh, uh, if I do any currency trading, I like to do it via of yeah, futures, you get better leverage. You, you, it, it's so much better. But I used to trade forex. Uh, forex is a little bit more difficult. Um, I do have uh, some traders that took the futures class, and we did have uh, we did have some modified classes, uh, some modified mentoring classes in addition, obviously free of cost uh, for the futures uh, for the forex traders. Uh, there are a lot of similarities, but there are a lot of differences in terms of uh, in terms of uh, respecting time frames and all that stuff. So it's a little bit more difficult. I do, and I do, Martin. Yes, I do. In fact, we do have uh, a Jose. Jose, you're here in the room. Jose likes to trade. Uh, he primarily trades futures. But he also likes to dab into uh, some uh, futures futures currency trading.
how long have you been trading Martin futures? Because there are, you cannot trade Forex with, uh, you cannot trade futures uh, the same way you trade Forex. And you love it, Jose. Okay. All right, five, guys, five minutes right here. Five minutes trying to set up. We got carried away was lunch and this was a trigger right here into uh, 600, 25,600 by 25,7, by 25,570. Here we are, look at Russell at 90. See how it's clustering into the 90? This is decision point right here into the 90. See it went a little bit, it blipped and it, it's trying to hold here. We are still maintaining the structure for higher, low, higher, low, low, higher, low. And yes, low, higher, low, higher, low in NASDAQ, two higher lows in NASDAQ. And we have a weak structure in Russell. Yeah, and Martin, it's different. It's different. You approach the market in a totally different way. So the technical analysis is pretty much the same. But in regards to the setups and the time frames, they don't work. If you're applying futures concepts to the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, if you're applying forest concepts to the futures market, not working. And you're gonna get, aren't you getting whipped around, stopped out a lot on that, and then the trade goes your way? And remember that the, the, uh, the um, um, forex market is a relatively, flat market. I, I don't particularly love to trade the futures market, especially, uh, and that's one of the reasons why I navigated more towards, uh, 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 towards futures, not Forex, is because, you know, there's so much, uh, there's so much control over the currencies lately, so much control over the currencies. You can trade the dollar here. Uh, through futures, you could trade. Uh, and in fact, the euro has, uh, has a really nice setup, speaking of. All right. I, and I like to trade futures on higher time frames. I don't like to mess around at, uh, for day trading purposes. Okay. Here, this is the buy right here. Uh, let me give you the number. If it trades over 1.1315, 1315. This is going to be a buy. And by the way, guys, we're hosting an open house next week, next Thursday as well. Okay. And uh, remind me to look at this, right? This is a buy. This is your risk. This is your stop. Okay. You can use two, four as your stop. Oops. There we go. Oh, it just, why did it go like that? I don't know. Let's check it out on the daily here. All right, here it is, because you have a channel. It has been downtrending, and right now for the first time in a very long time since the contract rule, you can see that it's ascending. So over 13, 15, this is a buy, and the risk for this trade is going to be below this low right here, 11.24. Okay. All right, guys, let's take lunch break. I'll see you guys back at 2 o'clock. We're going to try to get our money back. It's not up to the market. Here you go. Hey, Jane. Jane used to trade Forex, but now trade for uh, currencies on futures. It's so much easier. It's easier. Martin, try that. Paper trade that, but give it a little bit of time, at least 60 days. 
Exactly, exactly. The Euro, the Pound, the Aussie, Canadian Dollar. <laughs> Ron, are you having lunch without us? <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you back here at two o'clock. Let me know. Are there any other questions that are not answered? I hope not. All right. I, I went through all the questions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. These are, uh, and this is the catalyst for the currency. Same with FOMC and the dollar and the euro, you're definitely going to see, you know, interest rates are affected, right? And that's why you're getting all this, uh, all this movement. Decision point in Russell, and I'm going to conclude with this, decision point in Russell here at the 1490, okay? 1490 to 1494. All right, guys. I will talk to you later. I will see you back at 2 o'clock. Enjoy your lunch, and uh, stay safe in the market out there during lunchtime, all right? And then when we come back at 2 o'clock, we're going to review the market, wait for some setups. Uh, and obviously we're going to see, uh, like in fact on Monday and uh, Monday and Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, we have some great opportunities at three, uh, uh, three 30, three 30, three 45 in the last 15 minutes of the trading session. Let's see if it's going to happen again. Anyways, very side, uh, uh, sideways market, messy, messy market. If you want to trade something into lunch, Best odds, best odds would be for uh, YM over 612. The risk has to be 570, 570 really wide. S&P, I would just leave it for a while, just very much sideways. And you want to see YM. I'm going to put some alerts here. If you guys want to watch these trades going into lunch, all right, if NASDAQ is going to go um, above 72.39, that's going to be the trigger, but it needs to hold 25 for the stop. Okay, I'm going to put an alert here. Okay, this is a small cluster going into lunch. So it breaks over 39, you go long, your target is going to be into, uh, first target is going to be 45, second target is going to be 50. We're trying to rotate here. The strongest structure I see here in uh, still in the Dow. 612 Dow as a possible buy, if you guys are still around. And uh, 70 for the stop, under, under 73 the stop. Okay, these are the clusters. S&P not ready yet. Inside bar, not ready yet. I'm not really sure about Russell. Like I said, it's flirting with a 90. We'll see. All right, guys, I will see you at two o'clock. Enjoy your lunch. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PM session. Let's continue and see what we have in store for uh, the rest of the day today. We have two more hours into the close, and we have our 15-minute charts up. So far, we're holding the uptrend uh, from this morning. We discussed uh, uh, the fact that I am moderately bullish for the trading session today. We did have divergence from Russell. Russell is still into the red zone, and it's still... Uh, trading into its support level. It has support from 90 to 94, as discussed all morning long. Not sustained, it has not sustained the 10 a.m. low. And in fact, it is hovering into the lows right now. So uh, the more it hangs out at these lows, uh, if it breaks below 90 again, we may see more a more accelerator run down, possible target into the 94, into the 1484. All right, let's review YM. YM 15 minute chart, you could see right here that throughout lunchtime, and I know there are some members here that were not here from the beginning, and there were some trades that I posted in here before lunch. 
Let me just copy and paste them in here. So you guys, if you guys have joined earlier, you don't have history, uh, you don't have any of the chat history available. So here it is. Uh, these were the trades for lunchtime management on your own. I presented the buy targets, the stop targets, and the tar, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the entries, the stops, and the targets for the Dow, Imini Dow, for Imini NASDAQ, and for Imini S&P. As you can see right here, YM hit target at 640. So if you were the lucky trader to take this trade, you're already in the money, you have banked, uh, almost 30 points on this uh, on this move. So here it is. Why I'm now it's decision point again. We're trading back into resistance. As you can see, we have a double top right here. Not certain about the third top though, because we don't have a pivot form yet, and uh, price action is still trading into a continuous pattern. So we cannot talk about a triple top situation here. Uh, and in fact, I would not short anything, uh, anything along these lines, obviously. Um, the m and &E S&P, uh, we pointed out the trigger. Uh, it trigger in S&P was 32. It is trading right now at 35. Uh, the target is 36 to 38. And uh, we don't have much more into the 36. We have about a point into that 36 number. And it achieving target. Uh, also, last but not least, NASDAQ that had uh, a little, had to have a little bit more help, but we had an algo push. It was on charts, this algo push right here. It was actually at 1243 that, that uh, ignited. And uh, we, it did trade uh, over our entry area, 72.39. Your risk was right here into the 25, 20, uh, actually 26 was support, 25 was the stop. And it reached, uh, it reached a high of 47. We did have a target into the 7250. If you're still in, your stop is still the same, okay, in this. All right, so uh, the a thank you so much, Nico. AM trade stop, stopped, AM trade stopped at 35, back in at 104, and I'm holding, not sure about the stop. Uh, you got in, you got in at 604, you got in at 604, your stop is still um, 572, under this pivot. Nico, your stop is still right here, okay? Um, you should have been taking target here at 40, especially into lunch. It, it just printed that 40, okay? So it printed that 40 and you needed to take, uh, you needed to take profit. Worst case scenario, if you really wanna stay in the trade, I will not let it go below 610. At least lock in something, just don't, you know, just, just, just don't close a red trade because you've, you've been up quite considerable. You've been up like almost 30 points here. Okay, all right, crude, hang it on to the 61.8% FIB. I will be watching it in the overnight trading session. We do have a private Twitter feed for members only, for active members of the trading room, where we uh, post trade ideas for the evening. Not every day, just when, um, just when uh, and this is outside of the trading room hours. I review charts at uh, nine, uh, 9.30 to 10 o'clock, and if I see something that is setting up, obviously I communicate it to all our members. Obviously the overnight trades are swings going into the next trading session, into the New York trading session, so there are trades that will be taken for the Asian session and the European session, and will be continued most likely into the um, New York trading session. All right, we're getting a bit of a push here. I'm zooming in again to a two minute time frame. Just remember one thing, 2.15 to 2.30 is usually shakeout time, okay? Just want you guys to be aware of that. So usually you may have some false breakouts 
within these time frames. So you can see how I go back and forth and adjust the time frame depending on the time of the day. This is something characteristic to the method that we teach, okay? Because there are specific time frames they have to trade into a specific time of the day. You can't say that, oh, okay, I'm just gonna look at five minute charts and that's it, or I'm gonna look, I'm just a trader off the tick chart. It doesn't work like that, okay? Um, a possible breakout over 95 and a half to 96 in Russell may bring some more buying pressure, and especially if it prints at 95.5, okay? And what I'm watching right now is that the volume is subsiding a little bit. There was an algo hit exactly at 2 p.m. Eastern. That's why I was uh, off the mic a little bit. I wanted to come at the mic closer to 2.15 uh, because I saw that algo uh, spike to the downside at 2 o'clock. So that's, again, a shakeout, okay? Uh, support level moving forward for the Imini Dow is 6.05. Uh, 605 for the PM session. The second support level is 570. Okay, here it is. Breakout over 40. All right, so stay tuned, guys. My members, stay tuned. We may have a trade in crude tonight. Okay, we may have a trade in crude tonight. All right, now, all the indices um, are pretty much in sync. Uh, Russell is trying to recoup a little bit and it, it is really making a great effort to try to rotate off of that 9094 cluster zone is trying to bottom out into that zone lots of support right there okay lots of support right there so Nico if you're and, and if anyone is still into these trades uh, take at least half of the profits here okay half of the profits here from the lunch breaks you can see that we are trading into the first target into the S&P. We just need less than two points into the second target in S&P. And NASDAQ needs about less than three points. It's printed at 47 uh, into the last target into the 72.50. And in YM, if anyone is still in, I know some of you guys are still in. I have been chatting with you, private messaging with you. Uh, just take half of your position or um, however you want to manage it. I truly advise, like, once you hit target one, take half. And as you're progressing into target two, three, you can take a quarter. And then uh, the last lot, you trail to your final target and you just lift your stop up in uptrends. All right. So as, I want to show you something that is very interesting here. And uh, we, talked this, uh, uh, we talked about this this morning about the 10 a.m. high and the 10 a.m. low. This is the 10 a.m. high. 10 a.m. high is folding. Look at this battle that has been going on through lunch. So we spiked up. We came back down, spiked up. Look at these pressures to the upside. So one big bar up, grind, small grind, small grind, small grind, bam, right back up. And then look at these bottoming tails right here. Coming right into this, uh, coming right into this uh, 10 a.m. high. So 10 a.m. high right now becomes support for current price action into the 20 zone. 20 zone, remember, it is not a printed number. Two zero, bam, that's going to be the stop. No, it's an area. Support resistance are area or cushions. All right, and you have to know how to work with these cushion areas. All right, if we hit, and remember, this morning we made a new high into the 57. Okay, 57. We haven't made a new high. Also, 57 represents a weekly buy trigger, which is super, super, super strong because if we initiate that trigger, we may have a big surge in the market. Okay, a big, big push in the market for an acceleration higher. And the next target, as we mentioned this morning, is going to be 70720. Okay. 700, 720, 750. These are, uh, these are the upcoming targets. Look at the grind up. So we had an accelerated sell here uh, into 1130. One, two, three bar down, back into support level. Remember, this is our support level right here. And then we started with an inside bar, violation of an inside bar. And then we had another inside buy here from which we started to continue higher back into this 10 a.m. high. We had the price hover, 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 and now we're trying. So this is the new channel that we have, the 645 by 620, okay? 
And in fact, you have to consider the 615 cushion zone. So if you want to trade and if you want to place a stop, if you want to take, let's say, a momentum trade, this is where this is where you definitely want to uh, want to have a stop in at 614. That's why I suggested um, I suggested to Nico that uh, uh, if 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 you're still in the trade to lock them in, and that would make a lot of sense. Okay. So again, we want to see the breakout over the 644 area right here, okay? Over the 644. This is going to bring a lot more buying pressure. Game plan for the afternoon trading session is going to be the following, and this is going to be valid for all the indices moving forward. We want to see a heavy break at least into the 60 to 65, even 670. And then on the next pullback, that is going to take the price back to 45 or 50. Rotation, we're going to get back in on the next setup. If you want to take the trade right now, remember that you had a, you would most likely you want to have a soft stop because if you're going to put a hard stop into 20 or even 15, you may be getting shaken out. Like I said, this is high time for shakeouts, high prime time, prime time for shakeouts, 215 to 230. This is prime shakeout time. All right. And then uh, breakouts may happen. And sometimes, not often, but you may see breakouts that keep on going and that's fine. Okay. And that's fine. What I don't like about the chart patterns is that when I move to the two minute to, to see the momentum, obviously it's higher, right? So obviously you have a higher momentum. We had a flat 200 SMA here, not very significant since this is a very slow, very small time frame. but we can see that this was a common, a common, a common denominator from which the price started to coil around on this time frame, okay? Around this time of the day, these two minute setups are not really that viable and they not might work as much. We're trading into the progression of the one hour, okay? So one hour reversal came in at 622. I mentioned it here in the room with the risk here into the 519, okay? Which is a double bottom off of the hourly. We have the double bottom as well into, um, into Russell. Oops, sorry about that. And then uh, we're gonna do this analysis and then we're gonna start actively watching because I can't talk and trade at the same time. Double bottom right here into the 1495. You can see very well, we had the avalanche down and this is the selling pressure. Selling pr when selling pressure comes in, it just really, really takes the price down. And until the price calibrates, we talked about this all morning long. For, for the last three hours, we've been talking about Russell and how Russell is going to start, uh, start building some buying pressure between 90 and 94. Here it is. We're trading into the 95 once again. And this is the trigger. We're trading into the one hour trigger. If you like, if you like uh, uh, wide stops, I, and as a personal preference, I do not like to trade Russell, day trade Russell. I do not like to day trade Russell lately. I used to day trade Russell, but now it doesn't have a really good structure of, of uh, structure to the chart. Okay, and why is that? Well, because it has really wide stops, okay? If you wanna try it with micros, let me remind you, 10 point is 50 bucks, one point is five bucks, just like uh, the micro SMP. All right. So what I do like uh, in uh, what I do like in Russell is the thirty minute. Thirty minute speaks to me in the sense that it's uh, creating support right here into the fourteen ninety two zone. Okay. So a lot of support right here. It's still having selling pressure from this uh, dynamic uh, resistance at the ninety six level, and also from this prior low into the ninety seven. So it's getting two selling bands right here that are pressuring price, okay? Now, we're trading into this, uh, this reversal right here. Aggressive traders, and I specifically like Russell mostly for swing trades or a bit more of trend trades, longer term trades than get in, get out. Uh, these were the triggers into the 93, or if you're banking on the breakout, 95.5. In fact, this is the breakout point right here. Okay, if you want to use the risk for this trade, you have to use the low right here into the 88, okay, 88.5 or even because you have the 200 SMA. These support levels, once we have an avalanche down, are not going to hold. So that's why you have to wait for the pivoting area. That's why you have to wait. You have to have the patience to wait for the pivoting area to form. 
You just don't go buy it or short it on the fly. All right. Uh, so bottom line is that uh, we're going to go back to the five minute charts right here. I'm going to continue to watch my multi time frame uh, uh, charts to try to see if we get a better setup for the PM session. We had a first trade this morning for those of you that uh, for those of you that logged in a little later today, I'm gonna try to post it here again. Oh, let's see where that is. Lots of history here, lots of typing. Doo -doo -doo. All right, let me try to find it. Just uh, wanted to give you a heads up on that. All right, here it is. We had a first trade and it stopped out, okay? First trade, bam. 75 by 35, target 90, 600 and 609. This was a morning trade. And as you can see here, okay, as you can see here from the charts is that the price went below our stop level, below 35, right? It went right here. Here it is, 22. In fact, and I don't typically do this, with especially when I have an open house, okay? But the reality was that this was a double bottom right here. So typically what I do, okay, in certain situations like we had today, today I wanted to keep the hard stop. There are over 470 people in this room right now. And I don't wanna play around, you know, with, uh, 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 you know, with, uh, uh, with your accounts. Okay, should you choose to trade live? Uh, but typically what I do in this kind of, in this kind of situation, because we had a stop at, uh, at, uh, at the pivoting area, at the moment we had a pivoting, uh, pivoting, pivoting support at 535, okay, right here into 535, let me just go right here, 535, all right, here's our stop into the 535, because we did have a structure on the two minute that was pointing uh, to, a, uh, to a support level, and it was a little bit elevated support level from, uh, from the prior low, I typically use a soft stop. What a soft stop is a mental stop. And what I usually do, I add in more here at the bottom, and I give it a soft stop all the way to 500, okay? But these are things that we do in the trading room. I teach traders how to do it and how to buy the dip and all that stuff. It's, it, it's a little bit more complicated than I can do today. Uh, but typically, this was would not have been a stop, okay? That's what I was trying to say. All right, if you like to trade with hard stops, okay, it's fine. And I took the trade myself. I stopped out of the trade because I carbon copied the trades in my account. Uh, but typically this is the area where you add, okay? You don't stop out, you add. But of course you have to have, at least you have to use uh, half of your position size. I didn't mention this at the beginning. And there are some things that we do in the trading room that I'm not able to do here with so many people in the room. Okay, you guys have to have defined criteria, entry stop targets, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is, uh, and this is one exception to the rule. We don't do this often, but when you, have, uh, when you have a lot of support level here, and especially that you have this 15 minute, uh, the, I'm sorry, the 30 minute rotation here at 580, and in fact, I did mention the 80 in the, uh, in the room as well, uh, this is a projection higher. Had I not stopped from that trade, I would have called immediately another trade, okay? I would have called immediately another trade. But because I have one stop, I need to be extra careful. And ideally, on my second trade, I want to risk half of the risk that I initially risk, okay? Whether, you know, you want to use micros or um, full contract, whatever you want to use, okay? So we're going to go back to the 15-minute charts. Oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna go back to these five minute charts, okay? And like I said before, you know, uh, we're dealing right now with price uh, trading into resistance. And uh, come on, gold baby. Uh, I'm sorry, oil, crude oil baby. So beautiful right here. Take a look at the charts. By the way, Fintwit, if you guys, are you guys on Twitter? You guys on Twitter? You guys on Twitter, I love to see when traders were go like, oh, we're gonna short crude, this is a crude, this, this, this crude is a short crude. I love it, I love it. I love it when they do that. 
Why? Because it's a trap. This, this, you, you don't have sufficient data to short here. Okay. This is a long guys. This is basically a long. Okay. This is a long 5250. And, and again, this is, uh, the stop is 50, uh, 50, 50.50. 50. Okay. This is the swing. You can also use, um, 52 by 50. Let me type it in here. And this is for big accounts. Okay. This is aggressive. It's for big accounts, small accounts. Don't even look at this. Okay. 52.50 by 50.50. All right. And the targets 53, 54. 54.25 and void to 55. Okay. All right. Let me know if there are any questions. Okay, okay. All righty. Okay, and that is yellow is a swing long. Okay, yellow is a swing long. All righty. And when we get more uh, more pressure from crude here, if crude is gonna recoup, let's check out the four hour is really looking nice. One hour, beautiful. Weekly, nice. Fifty three forty, fifty three forty five can be an ad. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, shake and bake. Let's see what the next setup. We need a bit more juice in the market right now. Very nice. I like to uh, I like to look at it. Ooh, nice tap into and trigger. Oops, I forgot to take the trade. Hold on, guys. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let me put my order. Okay. I'm in. All righty. All right, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, tomorrow, what is the target for yes? Well, we have to watch price action going into tomorrow. D, DJ. First off, we need to trade over these highs. And if we trade over these highs, like I said, uh, you know, um, let me look at the chart again. First off, we need to trade over 40. If the price gets over 40, 47, and then it has a tradable void to 64, and that is an ES, okay? Longer target is 64 going into the end of the week. Should it break 40? So it's contingent on breaking 40. Okay, NASDAQ. NASDAQ target 7288, uh, 72.88, and then it's gonna enter a void into 73.26 and 
okay? But it truly depends on price action. Truly depends on price action is gonna do. Nice tap into this uh, 20 SMA. Very nice tap into the 20 SMA. Okay, Trump will, uh, news from CNBC, will make a decision on China tariffs soon. So what do you think is gonna happen here? It's a gamble. After the G20, I'll be meeting with President Xi and uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, probably planning it sometime after G20. Okay, so after G20, soon is after G20. All right. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I don't have any trades at the moment other than the ones that are posted. At $53, raise the stop to break even and crude. You can also trade uh, if you don't if you don't like to trade crude. If it's too big for you, minis are available. Minis are half the size, almost half the size of the full contract. Uh, the symbol symbol is QM. So it's either CL or QM. Nice push. Ooh, market. Crude and market. I'll go push. We're already 20 cents up, 30 cents up, 30 cents up and CL. That's 300 bucks per contract. Okay, RTY going up, our alert triggered. Come on, baby crude. Nice, nice, nice. Look at it go vertical.
Beautiful move up, guys. If you're if you took crude as the day trade lock in that 53 number. All right, very nice, guys. Very nice. As a day trade, you could lock in 50 uh, uh, 50 points here in crude. Nice. All right, so this was on a rumor. The narrative is not really important. It's about Mexico again. Let's see how it reacts into the 650 zone. I'm just uh, tuning in to um, CNBC here to watch. They're talking about the trade tensions. Yeah, I know, James. Absolutely, your second target was that 700. Remember I said that there's room to 700, 720, and 750. Let's see if we get some opportunities here. Are you all out, Nico? All out at 57. Next support level for ES is 2838, 2838. They may, they may want to rip on momentum here. I don't like the 15 minute bar. The 15 minute does not does not show us anything. Well, here's another uh, piece of information. Your tariffs on Mexico going into effect Monday still possible. This is the new norm of trading, guys. You have to be prepared for this volatility. You have to know how to deal with this. Get in on momentum, get in on some action here. Hmm. <clears throat> By the way, guys, is anyone uh, anyone coming to the Chicago Traders Expo? I will be there. I'll be in Chicago in...
when is it? Uh, July 20th through the 23rd. Oh, you're going to be here next week? Mm-hmm. SMP testing support. I almost knocked down a bottle. <laughs> it was a glass one too. Okay. I don't know, this is very aggressive. It's not for everyone. Not for everyone, guys. I see the possibility of a rip in ES over 40, uh, 42, 42 by 37, 42 by 37. I don't have time to post it. <laughs> Her snapple <laughs> of tequila. A bottle of tequila. I have it right here. <laughs> we need one. All right, possibility for a rip higher, 42, like I said, an S&P 42 by 38. I don't have time to type it. I just got a little lot in. It's, uh, it's a Momo trade into 44, that's it. Same concept in YM, same concept in NASDAQ. We're getting sandwiches on the five minute for a potential rip higher. 700 by under 60 in YM if you're considering this. It's a Momo trade into 720 and then lock and break even and let it go. Let's see if we get 650. I don't have time to post. I'm taking the trades as well. I'm on the mic if you can feel free to ask questions. Oh my God, I know you got RTY. It was my least favorite. I can't believe you got in. Yeah, it, yeah, her, it's not for us. I mean, not for those accounts. Too aggressive. We like conservative. 720, remember 720 for YM. 45 to 47 for ES. 44. 45, 47, 40, yes. 44, you lock and break even. Or take profit. It, these are scalps. Their news is pouring on the wires right now. Stop for ES has to be 37. Or 37 and a half. Not a good idea to play with charts. I just, okay. <laughs> I just accidentally closed my active trader. <laughs> we need to see a print of 45. Target one, ES. If Russell over um, 1502.5, we go higher. 
Gold pulling back. <laughs> I think so, say. Some topping tail action on the one minute. One minute has lost its Momo. I don't know. I'm thinking ES. I'm thinking e I don't like the two minute in ES. I don't like the one minute in ES, but the five minute is still holding the structure. Thirty seven is minor support in ES. We need 1502.5 in Russell in order for these other indices to start moving higher. Um, okay, Rudy, I'll check it later. Minor support in YM is back into the 650 to 640 zone. Uh, NASDAQ is a bit choppy, okay? Now, I, I would just stay away from NASDAQ, away from Russell today, not really behaving that well. Ron, no, it doesn't. You're trading, uh, you're trading, look at the weekly. We're right here into resistance. It's only normal for the price to gyrate around this area for it to start pushing higher, okay? And it's gonna go up, down, up, down. So it's gonna punch in, punch down, okay? I don't, so to me, this doesn't look like the top. But on the contrary, I think that starting, look, at the, look how strong we are and even on the daily. This weekly reversal is very strong. You know what this is? A pullback buy within a trend. 
okay? This is a pullback buy within a trend. Is this an uptrend or a downtrend? Ron, I'm not asking you. <laughs> I'm just asking the room. Guys, this chart right here, is it an uptrend or a downtrend? The S&P, correct. So what do we do in an uptrend? Thank you, guys. What do we do in an uptrend? That's right, Louise. Pullback buys are viable. Do they work every time? No, they don't. And in fact, we did have some prior history where they did not. I mean, look what happened here. We had one, two, three, four bars down, and we had the weekly reversal tapped onto the 20 SMA, just like here. Okay, but now we're trading a little bit above, and then we collapsed back into the bottom of the range. Shake out, and then violent buy into the highs, okay? So now this is a pullback buy into an ongoing trend. So moving forward, you guys perhaps are not going to be trading with me tomorrow or next week or whatever. You're just visiting the room. Maybe this is not for you. But just, just so you know, moving forward, we're going to be into a pullback buy scenario. If the price should continue higher through today's trading session and start making, again, new highs on the day, like we did already, okay? We're gonna continue higher. Notice that S&P still entered this resistance right here into the 40s, right? So we're still trading it. We're digesting that resistance. The more we coil into this area, the more we're gonna start pushing higher, okay? We have targets into the 50s, like I said, okay? So I reiterated, I don't wanna repeat them, but uh, we, we have a nice tradable void at least into the 60s, okay? At least into the 60s. Nice coil here in Russell. Remember, we need to see Russell over 1505, and then we're going to start moving back up. Let's go back to the five minute. Uh, Chalk 6C, Canadian dollar. Coming right up. What do you want to know about it? Uh, Chuck. <laughs> oh my God, that happens to me all the time. <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Luis, yes. <laughs> I'll bring the chart up and I'll give you my take on it. Okay, first off, monthly chart is just like the euro trying to point higher. And so I think it's going to go higher. Okay, you're just about, and if the price is going to trade and write these numbers down, okay, in the Canadian dollar, should the price go higher above 0 0.7475. 7475 is going to be the trigger for higher. Okay? 7475, trigger for higher. Weekly perspective, we already went higher. We already digested. So uh, aggressive longs were in at this high right here into, uh, into the 0 0.745. 745 was the trigger for higher and it accelerated higher. Now it's trading into resistance, into the 7493. This is where resistance is. And you have a confluence zone here. We have multiple elements. You have the dynamic uh, resistance from the 20 SMA. You have support from prior price action from back in January and taking a step back in, uh, in uh, what, what is this, 2018, you could see that you have, you have uh, support here that is creating resistance bands into this price. Should, the pri should this price break over this high right here, that is 0 0.742. And when you see a print of 0 0.742, that is your signal to go long. And your next target is going to be into a 7540. Okay? Going to the daily. 
All right. I don't know if you're in as a swing. That's why, uh, that's why I was asking. I don't know if you're in a swing or a day trade or, you know, uh, what you're in. But today's price action was very conducive for a continuation higher. Hit resistance, challenge resistance again. Yesterday, it came into test resistance and it fizzled out. It came back into the range. Support level still intact and 74.50 still intact. Today, we regained the strength from the same level of support that we uh, pretty much set yesterday. And we punched in through above the prior high sending the price higher and making a new high compared to yesterday's high. Today's high, 0.74875. So this, is, uh, this has a good pattern for a continuation higher, at least into the 0 uh, 0.75, 7,500, and back into the 70, uh, 75, uh, 7520 to 75, 7540 to 50. Hope that answered your question. I don't know if you were in the day trading portion of it or the swing trading portion of it. If you tell me, I could give you more clues on that. The 30 minute is trying to hold the 10 EMA. The one hour is still trading into resistance. So you can expect some, some kind of pullback. And if you should get a pullback, uh, you need you need uh, zero point seven four seven area to hold. In S and P, yes, this is this is just a correction. Thirty seven is still holding. In fact, thirty eight twenty five is still holding. So this is this is still okay. The key here is still in Russell. Key is still Russell here. Thank you, Carlos. Yeah, if you want to sign up, it is, let me type it in the room. I think this is the link. <laughs> I think this is the link. Yeah. All right, we're just about to enter. We're just about to enter the last hour of trading. Let's see if this is going to be the push hour. Fifteen seconds to the top of the hour. I don't like the fifteen minute candle here. It's holding a bit higher. Five minute rotation, forty one, forty one by still by thirty seven. This is another setup, 41 by 37, 41 by 37. And yes, 
41 by 37. And I can't catch all of them, but here's the trigger. Um, well, here it is, 688, anywhere, anywhere within this, uh, within, within this uh, range up to 690, okay? And the stop for this mini trade, this is also a scalp going into the high today, 667 or 665. YM, that's, that's YM. So it depends on what you want to trade. Uh, also for NASI, uh, we have the 7262 or 63, and the risk for this trade, the stop is 53. This is, and, and to me, if you're, if you're getting that Russell over 1502.5, that's key. I, I think that that is definitely key there. You got a five minute reversal. I don't really like, I'm not very thrilled about the last 15 minute candle. But as long as 37 is holding, it's still a viable trade. Algos, 1501 Algo. That's actually 301. At 301, we had an algo. You know what that algo did? Clear the stops. Some traders have the stop at 38.75. Clear the stop. Maybe this time around, it's going to be ready to go higher. Uh, for YM, you have to consider the 65 zone. Ron, the 65 zone. The thing here with, with all these indices, uh, like if you really want to have, you have to put your stop way, way outside of the algo zone so you don't get hit. Okay, so you don't get hit. Uh, I, I'm not really sure, Herb. We may. This is the power hour. Uh, so, Ron, the thing here is that you want to put your stop away from where you think the algos will hit. Algos love the lows of the, the bottoming tails because they love to juice up on that. And that's the, where we sell, algos buy. Remember our trade this morning? That's where algos were accumulating within those price ranges. They were accumulating from 35 all the way to the 20s. So you want to you want to stay away from these bottoming tails as much as you can. But if you want to use a tight stop for, you know, for this as a scalp, you got to use like 65. I'm just telling you what works in the market. Who is waiting for the ramp with me? Ramp time yet? Thirty eight is a confluence zone in SMP.
Let me know if you guys have any questions. <clears throat> oh, I, I'm just seeing a question here that came in. Um, Jorgensen, I don't know if you're still here into the room. You were asking if you if I have any DAX traits. I don't have DAX. Um, I would love to share some my thoughts on it, but I don't know where to get the, the chart. I don't have it on my TD Ameritrade. I never, yeah. I'm just typing some answers uh, for some members that have private messaged. Come on, yes. 38 seems to be holding. Uh, okay, I gotta scroll back now and see some of the questions. Uh, Martin, if you, uh, if you don't mind, if you can repost the question, I would greatly appreciate it. You said that you have typed it in. I, I can't seem to find it. Ron, how many trades are we in right now? We're, we're in crude and ES. And if you, uh, if you want it, so I don't, so when I trade the indices and when I call indices long, I take only one trade. I don't like to overload into one direction and one don't want to over accumulate. And of course you can't focus on seven charts, uh, but I am in s and long. I did mention it here as part of, uh, as, part as, a, as part of a five minute buy into the 2841 with a risk at 37. I also highlighted the fact that you can also take if you would if you prefer more to trade the Dow, okay, you could take it anywhere between 88 and 90 and have a risk into 65. Okay. Same concept applies for NASDAQ. Okay, same concept applies for NASDAQ. It's a five-minute rotation, trigger into 62, 
and the stop into 53. I also said that we should get more buying pressure should Russell trade over these topping tails into the 1502.5. So they need to trade a little bit higher than the topping tails. And then we're going to get a little bit more pressure into, uh, into our indices and more expected follow through. Okay. Um, so, and also we are, Ron, we are in crude long. Ron, what type of price action would cost you to short? I would not short S&P tomorrow. We are in an uptrend as long as we're trading within a weekly reversal. <laughs> to me, shorting is out the window. Guys, don't short. You're going to get killed in this market if you short. If you have good news coming up from Mexico, you're going to see the Dow up 400 points. You're going to see the S&P up 50 points or 30 points or whatever. It's going to be a killer. Don't try to short pullbacks. Go with the trend. Go with it. Why would you short? Don't short. Don't short. Okay? Pullback buys. Wait for the pullback. It's the easiest thing to do on the planet. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is sit and wait and watch for the price to pull back. Patience. Okay? Um, Ron... If we are into the YM trade, if you want to take, if you wanted to take YM, you could take YM. I typically trade only one index at a time. I don't take three indices at the same time or two indices at the same time. This room accommodates a lot of individuals. So that means that if, and there are preferences. There are traders that love to trade only the m and &E SMP. There are traders that love to trade only the Dow. I know traders that love to trade everything or some traders that are really specialized in one index and one index alone. And that's fine. Okay. I like to look at the, diff at the different market structure. So I focus more on some relative strength or some relative weakness. For instance, if I see a breakout or if I have a chart that is, and for instance, the reason why I called S&P first was because I had S&P on my multi, uh, multi time frame platform my screen and i was able to pin the parameters and by the time i went to my other screen to see uh to see how they're correlated okay uh i couldn't get the exact price because the exact price came into 85 and 86 versus 88 to 90 so that's why i highlighted 88 to 90 you could get in 88 to 90. okay but guys as you know as I don't know, a fun fact for, or a takeaway from today, okay? A take, if, if you were to say, hey, you know what? What am I going to remember from my whole experience today from this trading room? Is patience to wait for the setup and don't short in an ongoing trend. We started the day knowing that we're gonna do what? If certain parameters will be met, we're gonna continue higher and I said, I am moderately bullish today, okay? Moderately, not extremely bullish, why? Because we were pulling back from the highs and I didn't know how the market is gonna digest the current highs, okay? Three fifteen. it's 3.15 p.m. Eastern. All right, we're continuing higher. As we're continuing higher, I'm going to leave these charts right here, but I'm going to pull on the screen so we can monitor both. 
Okay, what I want to uh, what I wanted to mention today is that we're going to do a little demo on the class. We're still watching charts, okay? So we're going to do a little demo on the class. I have been asked to do this. I wasn't able to do a recording. I really don't have a lot of available time for this because I invest 100% of my time in trading. Um so in in trading and I run this trading room and I trade my own accounts and Obviously, this requires a lot of uh, a lot of attention uh, on my behalf and a lot of effort. So beyond four o'clock, I really don't want to watch charts and I don't want to do anything. But we teach a class. It is the Power Income Futures Trading class, and we're hosting it uh, on uh, June seventeenth. Uh, it is a five day class. Here it is. Uh, it is a futures day trading class. It's a five day class. It's going to be live online. We're going to teach you everything that you need to know to become a professional independent trader. And uh, basically we're going to teach you all of the techniques that were applied in today's trading session and a whole lot more. Uh, and the class is uh, from June 17th to June 30, uh, 23rd. And you're going to be able to be with me in the trading lab for another 30 days. Then uh, you can subscribe to our trading room. 99% of our members that, here it is. Go baby. 99% uh, of the traders that, uh, that um, uh, take the class follow us for at least a couple of years uh, because you can consider the trading room as your training wheels. Okay. As your training wheels. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> I appreciate that. Here's what we teach, and I'm going to send you guys the link and all the info and all that stuff because I don't have a lot of... Uh, um, uh, a lot of time now because of the, me watching price action. Uh, and of course it becomes emotional when you're in a trade. Okay. But what we teach in class, and this is the, the full curriculum, uh, we teach an intro. What is the contract? So we teach you right from the beginning. So if you're not an experienced trader, uh, if you, um, or if you have been trading for a while, three years, two years, five years, and if you're not, um, uh, if you're not uh, successful, definitely this class is for you. So we do an ample uh, introduction to futures, uh, futures trading. What is the, like I said, what's the contract, et cetera, all that stuff, plus a lot more information about rollovers and all the fun stuff that happens uh, in the futures world. We teach you the ABC of charting, like the ABC and the XYZ of charting. So everything, patterns, price action, candlesticks, everything. Uh, also, tools and indicators that we use, we teach you the market stages so you don't get caught shorting this market. So uh, we teach you exactly when to buy, when to hold on to the position, and when to sell and when to start shorting. We teach you market trends and what, to, and what is the price behavior within the trend. We teach you day trading time frames, which time frames to watch in the morning, which time frames to watch in the evening. 47 for a first target in ES, 47 for a first target in ES, okay? 47 for a first target in ES. All right, we're trading right now beyond 720 target in YM. You should be making money, okay? Move your stops up to seven, seven lock in 710, lock in 710 in YM, forget about the class. I'll send you guys the email. Okay, forget about it. Trading is more important right now and making money is more important to me right now. <laughs> okay, so you you guys are going to get the emails. All right, uh, Ron, break even price. Uh, I know lock in 44. S&P lock, start locking in 44. S&P lock in 44. ES lock in 44. This is too early for the ramp. This is too early for the ramp. We may be getting another pullback. Uh, for those of you that are in YM, lock in 710. 710 in YM. YM, 710. Lock in 710. Any of you guys are in NASDAQ, if you guys are in NASDAQ, you really want to lock in 7. So oh, this is going to be a hard one. 7-3. Mm, 737373 seven, 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 NASDAQ lock in 73
Russell made it over our key area, 1502.5. Hello. Good job. Good job, guys. Awesome. Crude. 50 cents in crude. Awesome. We may get another pullback. I'm going to go back to the two minute right here. We're in Momo land. And by the way, this is my a new technical term that I have just, <laughs> that I've just invented. All right, let's get the push. Yes, still 44. Star locking 44.5, 44.5 in ES. Seven two zero NYM, lock in seven two zero YM. NYM. Lock in. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Lock in 74 in NASDAQ. Remember, I'm only in ES, but I'm trailing the two for, for those of you that are in those trades, okay? And you know why this is happening right now, right? Because of that weekly, the weekly trigger, right? That's, that's why we're propelling higher, the weekly trigger. Don't go against this market. Tomorrow we may start having Russell in play. Shaky morning, but re very nice afternoon, right? <clears throat> Lock in 76 in NASDAQ. Lift the stop up. Lift, lift, lift. YM, YM lock 45, YM lock 40, oh, I'm sorry, ES lock 45. You know who you are. <clears> hmm. <throat> Lock 27 NYM. What the heck did I type? <laughs> YM27 lock. <laughs> SMP potential to 47. S&P potential to 47. Let's see. Still 45 in S&P trail. Still 45 S&P trail. Ramp came early today. Whoa, 47 right on the dot. Stay in, stay in. Stay in. Stay in all. Stay in all. Mm. 
You guys loving this or what? 46 trail, 46 trail, 46 trail in ES, ES 46. New numbers. NASDAQ 80. Thirty in YM. Hey, David. Go, baby, go. Let's continue to trail. We had we had an algo push at three twenty five. Let's see if this is going to continue higher or this was the this was a trap. We're going to see it right now. We had an algo push, algo push in ES. I'm pretty sure it was across the board. Holding 46. I love it. I love it. Uh, if you were in NASDAQ flat from NASDAQ, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just an ES. So for me, ES is like my top watch. Cause that's what I'm in. So if you're in NASDAQ, you're, thanks so much, Herb. Darn this, this ramp came way too early. This should have happened like 15 minutes from now, not now. But anyways, I'm not complaining. All righty, so we have NASDAQ that is out. <laughs> Cal, how can I be mad at you? What? Uh, why did not call, why didn't I call? I did. I didn't type it in the room because I didn't have time. It happened very fast. But I repeat it twice or three times in the room. And in fact, you should have still be in based on the uh, based on the five minute. Guys, did you hear me when when I called ES? Can you type it in the room? A few times. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. It was called several times. Come on, let's go, baby. Go, go, go. Focus, guys. We're in trail mode. Darn, I don't think we're going to get a pullback for an additional trade, but not complaining here. 41. Cal, 41. 41 or 42? depending on your liking, 41, 28, 41. We're up seven points right now. 20, 28, 41, 42 was acceptable. <laughs> okay, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 46, 46 is the trail in ES, 46 trail in ES, 46 trail in ES. Still 30, still 30 in YM. Things are getting like crazy. Yeah, let, let's keep 30 in YM. 30 in YM. I am not in YM. Okay, but I'm typing it for those of you that are in YM. Okay, ES 46. Keep the 46. We had more volume coming in at 329 two minutes ago. 329, bunch of volume came in. I will, Deborah, after the we, after we close this trade. 
No problem. If I forget, just please. It's not because I don't want to explain it. It's because I forget about it because I'm in full trail mode right now. Emotions are high when you're in a trade. You want to juice it up. Get as much profit as you can. Next target, next target is going to be 28.50. Huge resistance here, guys, by the way, into the 48. Huge, massive, massive, massive. If we break through this, we have 28.50. Uh, 28 and don't laugh. Potential run to 28.80. I don't know if it's going to be into the overnight or I can't tell you when. I could tell you the location. 2880 void 75 and 80 that's the next resistance darn i want to lift my stop up just pop already over 50 mhm mm yeah michael come on two more points in if it needs to blast over 50 if it prints the 50 it's going to run to 53 Come on, go, 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 go. 46 is still the trail. Why I'm over 57, we have a weekly trigger. We're off to the races. Trail 50 in YM, trail 50 in YM, YM 50. Keep it tight, keep it tight, 50. Forty-nine seventy-five. In ES, come on baby, one more, here it goes. Parabolic baby, just like we like it. Just like we like it. One more push, one more push. We broke a lot of resistance right here. If you're trading with multiple contracts, take some profit into the 2850 or trail half at 2850, trail half at 2850, trail half at 2850, let everything run. Don't take yourself out of the trade yet. Just trail 50. If you're using multiple contracts, put your stop at 50. Put your stop at 50. Parabolic move higher, go baby, go. Oh my God, this is insane. Go, go, go. Why and put your stop at 800? Put your stop at 800 or take it here. Take it, take it, take it, take it. SNP, put, put the stop at 50, 50, 50, no, 50, 50, 50. Let's not get greedy. 51, 50, no, 50, 50. Put your stop at 50. You're out of YM. SNP is the only one in the game right now. SNP is the only one in the game. Trail stop 50. Trail stop 50 in ES. 28.50 trail. Twenty-eight fifty-one trail, fifty-one trail, SMP, fifty-one trail. Fifty-one and done. Fifty-one and done. Just by a tick, by a tick, by a tick. Out. Done. Ten point guys. Thank you, Jose. Woohoo! 10 points in ES. I don't have the ka-ching sound anymore. <laughs> Only 110 points in YM, guys. Only 110 points. Sorry about that. Sorry I can do better than 110 points. <laughs> yeah. All right. We're rocking it today. Shaky start to the day. Very nice. But anyways, I just want to say one thing. I just want to say one thing. The pullback into these indices was so shallow. 
I did not see the market push higher in all honesty, in all honesty. I, I pretty much trade the setups. So there are two types of trades that I do. There are aggressive setups and more conservative setups. These conservative setups provide more of, uh, you're trading more with the market bias, but there are some aggressive setups that again, you have to take because, um, and again, the thing here is that when these setups are happening, okay, you, you got to be right spot on them. Like there's not a lot of room for a comment. Oh, okay. Am I going to take this? Am I going to take that? I, I can take them with this. I can take, no, you have to be really quick on the money and uh, really quick on the trigger. And for that, uh, for newer traders that, and we're done, by the way, I'm not taking uh, anything right now. I was expecting a pullback into three, 340 around this time, but definitely no, no more trades going into the trading session today. I think we had a pretty good day. We wrapped up the day and we're good. Okay. Um, what I, what I want to say is that there are two types of trades, aggressive trades and conservative trades. These conservative trades I like to take with full size, with full size, because they're trading into the, uh, into the trend. Okay. They're trading into the trends. And so when you're trading into the trend, you have more, um, I can't believe they're going still higher, but anyways, we trailed, we're fine. We locked in, we're fine. It's a day trade. And in day trades, you want to capture a portion of the swing and you have no idea that today the market was going to do this after the lunchtime and, and the morning chop. The morning was awful, was an awful start to the day. Very choppy. We had a stop out. Uh, and um, anyways, you know, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And uh, I, I didn't like it because, you know, uh, oftentimes, and like I explained through lunch, um, <clears throat> I like to add exactly where we stopped out, actually lower than that, I like to add. But anyways, I couldn't do this today with you because I wanted to give you an example of trades, you know, and how we trail in the trading room and the fact that I just don't throw numbers out there and say, hey, you could take it here, put your stop here, and you could, you know, take your target here. No, you have to, you have to know how to trail it. And I trail it out loud, hence the name of our trading room, Trade Out Loud in my company, Trade Out Loud, this is what I do, okay? I'm trading out loud, so I'm communicating all my trades with you guys. Everything that I see in the market, step-by-step -step market commentary, trades and I trail it with you. The reason why I'm trailing it, trailing it uh, out loud in the room is because I trail my own accounts and I trade my own accounts. I'm not just sitting entry stops and trade ideas and uh, my trades are actually trades that I do in my own account, okay? Uh, and I take all my trades, all the trades that I call, I take them. So there's no exception to, uh, to any kind of trades. Uh, the other thing is that when you have a conservative market, meaning you have a trending market, I can type in the room, the parameters of the trade. So I can type in the room. Okay. When we have an aggressive market. Okay. And when the price is gyrating and the price is moving so fast, I don't have the time to post in the room. So I just mention it, mention it probably 10 times in the room on the mic. Okay, you have your mic off, you're missing the trade. The whole purpose of this is for you to uh, understand, you know, uh, understand what I, uh, you know, uh, how I trade and what I trade and how I manage my trades. It is not only a trading room. You saw that throughout the trading session today. I provided a lot of elements of technical analysis, a lot of elements of education. And this is what we do on a daily basis. Not, it's not only for the open house and there are, uh, there are traders in this, uh, in this room that are our traders, uh, the trade out loud traders that can confirm what I'm, what I'm just saying right now. Um, and, uh, these aggressive trades, I cannot give, uh, 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 I, I cannot type into the room, the parameters because I want to take them right. And they, you have probably a second or two or five seconds before the price starts moving. 
and you don't and you can't type you you either type and you have a signal service where you don't do anything but type in trades or you take the trades and i'd rather take my trades because this is my living okay this is what i do so um going back to some of the questions um let's see here let's go back okay the one question that i had was about the ramp okay well here's the thing with the ramp um oftentimes the market is into a consolidation phase uh and uh when it is into a consolidation phase um usually you know it remains flat into the close times when the market can be in a consolidation phase most of the time are going into fomc uh option expiration um going into some kind of uh, news announcement that's when the markets range okay depending on when the announcement comes if the market sees the announcement and analyzes the announcement as positive you're going to get a breakout okay or you can get a breakdown okay in strong markets you're oftentimes going to get a ramp into the end of the day, not a hundred percent. So this is not something that is, let's say a trading strategy, but it has become a trading strategy in the last, I don't know, couple of months or a few months, not, not only a few months, but in the, within the past year. Okay. A lot of, uh, uh, and a lot of, uh, um, time, the last hour of the trading session of the New York trading session, in if the market is strong and if the market is set into um if, if the market is set into an uptrend most likely in the last hour of the trading session the market will continue higher okay in a strong market environment you are pretty much going to see some buying opportunities in the new york trading session at the beginning between 9 45 and 10 30 or 1040 and you're going to see an acceleration going into 1130 or so and then you're going to see the market drift just like it did today it drifted but it grinded higher and it broke out higher and i was waiting for an opportunity for a conservative trade not for aggressive trade and in fact we had two opportunities there were two setups that developed right there are two setups that this one worked best okay uh, but the other one worked as well. So if you had an earlier entry, you know, this would have worked uh, really well. Let me remind you that, let me see, let me scroll back here and then we're going to go back to the RAM uh, because we're still trading into the direction of that. Let's see where we have it. My goodness, there was a lot of typing in here. <laughs> okay. All right. So here are the trading ideas okay that i posted through lunchtime okay there were three trading ideas s p long at 2832 okay 2832 we were still trading into the direction of 2832 and remember i said target for lunch for lunch and i said you're on your own with your management i mean you have to know what you're doing uh 90 percent of the people that are in my trading room took the class Okay, took the class and they know how to trade. Okay, and I provide additional um, information on what I see in the market and the setups that I see, right? But they don't take the trades blindly because they know what those setups mean. And in fact, they comment with me in the room. And, and sometimes when, you know, when I'm really focused on, you know, uh, one index or, you know, another trade, they highlight the fact that say, hey, that's a weekly whatever, or that's a pullback buy, or the 30 minute is doing this, or the four hour is doing this, because they know what we're doing, okay? Um, so you can see here that S&P, we're trading into the S&P, and that's why I liked, and again, today, I liked the Dow, and I liked the Yemeni S&P, because they carried relative strength compared to the, uh, to the other two indices, to NASDAQ and Russell. Russell was extremely weak today. It was messing up the whole entire morning, and I said in the morning, I said, 
if things are not, not gonna work out, there's only one index to blame and that's Russell. Usually when you are trading into the highs, into the lunch, most likely you are gonna get a breakout into uh, 230. Well, around 230, what happened was that we had the initial pop higher that was news driven, and then we had a very shallow pullback going into, uh, and actually from, uh, from 235 all the way into three o'clock. Three o'clock should not have reacted the way it did. Usually the end of the day reacts in a violent form. We had, so we had an uptrending day, to, uh, to wrap up the ramp explanation. We had an uptrending day. We had the pullback and then things are settled because if you're breaking the highs into lunch, after lunch, and especially after the doldrum phase, odds are that things are pretty settled for the rest of the day to continue higher, okay? And this is what the ramp is all about. Usually the last 30 minutes, of, uh, 30 minutes in the day, Price is already said. We already know in which direction the price is going, right? If you have a strong ongoing trend through the, uh, through the trading day, then it's a no-brainer. The price will continue to move higher, okay? The price will continue to move higher. Uh, there's also another thing that is happening in the market at 3 o'clock. At three o'clock, the bond market closes and there's more volume and more influx going into the equities and going into the futures, okay? And that's why you have an increased hour and this three o'clock to four o'clock is called the power hour that continues to blast higher. So things are setting up around three o'clock and ready to blast after 3.30. Usually the ramp starts accelerating higher going into the, uh, going into the end of the uh, going into the end of the trading session. So this kind of activity that you saw happen now, starting with three o'clock, this usually happens at 3.45 or so, okay? All right, so I hope that answered, uh, that answered your, uh, your question. Uh, P.S., what do you mean by weekly triggers? Uh, I just did, I, I went over this, and uh, these are weekly pullback by buy zones weekly pullback buy zones weekly pullback buy zones all right we may get we may get a ramp here mini ramp here it goes here it goes all right uh first of all when you trade you don't play with uh you don't play with your charts and mouse and you don't talk and you don't not answer questions but here is another two minute buy setup setting up Okay, one, two, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five bar down into the 20 SMA, triggering over the high. I'm not gonna do this anymore. We're at the end of the trading session. We have 10 more minutes and I'm, I'm wrapping it up right here. I'm pretty exhausted after this day. I typically, I'm uh, uh, in the afternoon trading session, I'm off the mic. I don't answer questions, uh, but sporadically, if any of my members have you know, any particular question in regards to, uh, in regards to some trades that we're in, but I'm off the mic from two o'clock to four o'clock and I'm only on the mic when I call trades. That, that's it because there's a lot of analysis that goes into these charts and it's uh, really hard. Uh, it's really hard to talk, explain, and then look at charts. Okay. So just so you know, this was, uh, this was, uh, it's not easy to do what I'm doing. Um, you mentioned, and I'll go by this afternoon. Where was that? Um, I mentioned it before. Uh, let me try to scroll back and let, tell you exactly where that was. Uh, the algo for further continuation was at 325. Robert, just imagine what you can learn in the class. Your head will be spinning. <laughs> okay, so here you have the two minute pullback buy. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do right now, and hold on just one second. All right, we're gonna go a little bit into uh, what we teach in class. So like I said, we have full intro about the futures market. What is the futures market? 
how the futures market operates, different trading hours, what are the optimum trading hours for trading futures, uh, whether indices or commodities or uh, bonds or whatever you may be trading. We have a chapter about charting. We teach you everything about charting, setups, candlesticks, patterns, everything that you need to know about charting. We have tools and indicator, a chapter that is dedicated to uh, showing you what tools you need to have on your charts for successful trading, okay? Um, and um, we don't use sophisticated indicators. I always mention the fact that if you need to buy an indicator, the only people that are profiting from, from those indicators are the people that are selling them. You can have your own signal service once you learn how to trade. Become a proficient trader. That's what, this, uh, that's what trading is all about. You want to hang around in the trading room maybe three, four years, I don't know, but then you want to trade on your own. Uh, a complete trader is a trader that um, basically is into the market every single day for at least two to three years. You're going to come, uh, you become a complete trader after three to four years after you really learn about trading. I was taught like this. And I said, you know what? I've got it. I've got it. Um, hey, Denise, say hi to Joycey. Okay. Um, so when I first started trading, you know, I was told like, you know, you're, you're going to be a complete and utterly great trader after three years. And I said, no, I've got this. Six months into the process, no, I've got this. And I had it, but I did not live through um, you know, so you start trading, let's say in a volatile market environment, you get your butt kicked, right? And you go like trading is not for me. No, it is for you. You're just encountering a lot of turbulence and you need to know how to manage the turbulence and how to trade with algos and how to trade it. By the way, our method is a very sophisticated method. It's easy to understand, but at the same time, it's a sophisticated method. And we trade with algos. That's why when we call a trader, you see that you see the price starting to go. Okay, and we pay attention to all that. Uh, market trends. We teach you uh, the four of uh, the four. Uh, I'm sorry, the market stages. The four market stages. When is the optimum time to buy? When is the optimum time to sell? When is the optimum time? Uh, to scalp. When is the optimum time to go for bigger targets? This is this is how you understand the stages. And in this chapter, you will learn that in the stage that the market is in right now, you will never short. You will never short. Uh, we teach you market trends and how to trade with the trend. When the market is in an uptrend, when, how, how you need to trade and uh, how do you determine targets? How do you determine entries? How do you determine... Uh, your entries, your stops, everything that you need to, how you position size, but that's, that's more into the uh, latter part of the class. We teach you day trading timeframes. We also tap into swing trading timeframes. So all the individuals that will sign up for the class will have access to the recording of the swing trading class. And we will do a re, uh, uh, let's say a, a retake of the live swing trading class later on this, uh, later on this year. Uh, we teach analytical time frames. So yeah, your execution time frame is, let's say on the one minute or the take chart or the two minute, right? Let's say for example, today, I use the take charts as well, but today was not a time for the tick chart. There was not a time for the tick chart. So knowing what time frame to use is imperative, plus analytical time frames. What are analytical time frames? Time frames that dictate the bigger moves in the market. We use also advanced technical analysis to show price projections, to show price corrections, to show what the price is likely to do tomorrow, in the next week, in the next day, in the next hour, in the next five minutes. We teach multiple levels of support resistance. In fact, seven layers of support resistance. We teach you how to react based on one candlestick color, whether to have a bullish bias or a bearish bias on the day. You look at one candlestick on one time frame, 
and then you're gonna um, you're gonna tune in into the your training session and you're gonna go like I'm bullish or I'm bearish it's as easy as that by looking at one candlestick um, we teach you market tempo market timing did you see how I'm trading with the market timing I took my trade because not only it was a setup on the five minute in the morning but it was in a a rotation process and was in a correction process into the 10 o'clock major reversal time in the market. All right, we teach you trigger times, right? Trigger times. There are specific trigger times throughout the trading session. Okay, when you don't waste your money, so you know when to look for a setup and when you, you know when to sit on our hands. Okay, uh, the anatomy of the trade. What is the anatomy of the trade? how to determine precise entries, how to determine stops, how to determine targets, how to determine position sizing, and how to, how to calculate targets. These are all six very important elements of the trade and you must know how to calculate. And this is like math. This is, there, are, there is no room for error in here. This is math. This is 100% math. You don't wing, uh, uh, wing trading, okay? There's no winging. Um, trailing methods. Perfect example today, right? So how, what did I do today? I got into a trade because I know what the entry was. I know where my stop was. Based on those two pieces of information, I knew how to position size. I knew how to position size, right? Without those two elements, how do you know how many contracts you know, you're going to need to get, whether a full contract or a micro? You wouldn't know. You're just going to wing it. Winging is not a trading plan and should not, not be in your trading plan. A lot of traders fail because they don't paper trade and they don't have the proper knowledge to trade a market. Uh, so trail, you have to have a trailing method. How do you trail? How do you trail a trend? How do you trail a new scalp? How do you trail a, a Momo trade, right? You saw firsthand here how I trade out loud in the room every single day. We may not take trades. There are days when we don't take trades in the trading room. Yeah, there, because the market is not environment. I'm not a liquidity provider. I get in when the odds are in my favor and I need to have a confluence of zones for, for, uh, for us, for the traders to get into the trade. Uh, and we have three methods that we teach. Money management, risk, reward. Is it worth taking the trade in a certain location? We, for instance, last year, uh, we had, a, there was a very turbulent time from September all the way to December where the risk to reward was asymmetric because of the volatility. You have to, you have to know when to press, the, as frustrating as it may be, in one day not to take a trade, remember it's better not to take a trade and it's better to sit on cash, cash is a position, than to take a trade and have a loss. We teach you money management as well. Trading psychology. Psychology has everything to do with trading. Everything to do in trading. Your confidence comes from knowledge. You don't have the knowledge, you come, uh, you're, you're gonna get overwhelmed with emotions, your palms are gonna get sweaty when the trade goes against you. Or when you lose. The biggest mistakes traders make and often, more than 60, 70% of the traders, if they have a loss in the trade, what do they do on the next trade? They double up because they want their money back. That's the biggest mistake. And anyways, we talk a lot of, uh, a lot of trading psychology here. And then we're putting it everything together in a trading lab that is 30 days with me. You trade live with me 30 days and then you have the option to continue in the trading room. Included with the class. Okay, live classes. Okay, we provide live classes and the live classes are in two hour modules. Every evening we get together Monday through Friday from six o'clock to 8 p.m. Eastern. And I teach this class. You have access to the on-demand recording. Uh, you have unlimited life retakes. Unlimited life support if you have a question. You don't call an, a, a counselor. You just call me directly. You're emailing me directly. If you have a technical question or a trading question, you're not gonna be talking to an operator. You're gonna be talking to me. I do the trading, I take your call. 
you're gonna get the manual that is support for the class. The manual is about, we've redone the manual, we have condensated some pages because it was getting out of hand, I had 400 pages, and we have condensated everything, and now it's like 300 something pages, okay, which provides a guide, which provides a guide. In class, I talk, I probably talk triple, 900 pages, because I explain everything. You get a professional platform layout, whether you're using the Thinkorswim platform or you're using any other platform, you're getting the snapshots off my screens right here. If you're using obviously anything else than Thinkorswim, and uh, you're getting all those, uh, all that information from me because you need to have a professional layout so you don't toggle through charts, okay? All your questions are gonna be answered in real time in the trading room, just like today, and, and uh, also in class. Our goal for the trading room is not to have hundreds and thousands of people because I cannot handle hundreds and thousands of people. That's why we're very selective and we do these classes and that's why we're, uh, you know, we, there is a cost associated with learning how to trade professionally. I can teach you how to trade professionally, how I, do, how I trade every single day. Um, you're also, uh, you're also going to have access to, um, to the portfolio performance plus, plus, plus is what we call it, where you have a risk sheet for stocks, for futures. Uh, you also have the portfolio performance. You have a lot of information about futures timing, et cetera, et cetera. Some, uh, some additional, uh, some additional information about futures trading and more. So how it works? Basically, you first have to learn how to do it. Okay, you have to learn through the online class. It's like you could be anywhere in the world with an internet connection, and we're in. Uh, uh, and you could talk to me, you could take the class. Step two, after you take the class, you trade with me. As we're trading, I teach you the strategy that we're applying on each and every single trade. So I walk you through. I handhold all the traders through the trading process. All the traders through the trading process, no exception. Nobody's left behind. You have a question, you email me, you phone me, you text me, you know, you know, you know how to get a hold of me. You have to trade in a simulated account for 30 to 60 days, no more than that. Depending on your account size, we can establish together the risk for your trade just because if you're newer to trading. And here again, we're talking about position sizing. Position sizing is what's gonna make you as a trader or break you as a trader. Step three, you learn, trade, and start earning. Implement, refine, and trade with a group of like-minded traders. And that's in continuation into the trading room. Bottom line is that we teach the most powerful day trading chart patterns and how to exploit them for above average gains. And obviously you're gonna have access if you enroll in this June class. We're gonna send you the recordings for, uh, from Swing Trading as a bonus. And by the way, the class, the class is $3,000, the Swing Trading class. You're getting that for free. Uh, you're getting the six disciplines, the ESTR, entry, stop, target, uh, risk, and position sizing, and trailing and more. How to maximize your timing using simple and powerful indicators. How to maximize gains and minimize losses using, using proper money management techniques. Market timing, precise location, prone to institutional buying and selling. You probably noticed that I'm you know, I'm watching a lot of elements on my charts and I know when we're getting an algo influx or not. And I know when to start choking the trade or not. And much, much more. The class is going to start on the 17th. I forgot to type this in here. So the class is from June 17th to June 21st. It's five day intensive. It's from six to 8 p.m. Eastern. And it's online. A lot of our, I mean, a, a lot of the traders, you know, uh, are living outside of the U.S. So what, what they do is they tune into the recording, okay? They tune into the recording. They listen into the recording. You don't have to be present. 
at the time of the live class. Okay, you can actually access the recording right after the class. The tuition for the class is 4,995 and the, uh, there are installments available for those of you that wanna take advantage of the installments. Okay, and there are three installments available for this class. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me here into the room. If not, this is a wrap. I hope you all had a great, amazing trading day. And uh, I will see you guys, our members, back into the trading room. Remember, uh, use the link and also the password, uh, the regular link and the password. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow at nine o'clock. And uh, yeah, perfect. Thanks for the private messages, guys. Thank you so much. Again, if you want to sign up for the classes, info at tradeoutloud.com. This is a recession-proof skill, guys, that you're learning right now. You may not know it, whether you want to supplement your income or you want to uh, you want to make this as your primary income. Remember, trading and understanding how to trade takes time. You might as well start now. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, Allie, if you want to sign up for the class, just send an, in, uh, just send an email to info at tradeoutloud.com. And we will provide you with all the information. We'll provide you with the full class curriculum. We'll provide you more, in, more information about the class. And should you choose to uh, continue further, just email us back and we'll send you the invoice for that. No pressure. We're not going to stalk you. We're not going to send you any emails or anything like that. So just a heads up. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have a wonderful afternoon. It was a great trading day today. Hope to see everybody soon. Next week, we're also uh, preparing, um, uh, we're preparing an event, but more details about that. Uh, make sure that you're in our uh, email system and uh, more info, info on that this weekend. Have a good afternoon, guys. Hope you had a blast and hope you made a lot of money today uh, on our calls. We had a fantastic day and we made a lot of money today. Have a good night. Yes, you can actually, yeah, that's a good question, Martin. A anybody, can, uh, anybody can sign up for the class. Uh, anybody can sign, uh, I'm sorry, anyone can sign up for the trading room. We have the trading room available for everyone. And uh, 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 it's not mandatory to have the uh, to take the class. Thanks, Rudy. Thank you so much, Ali Martin. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at info at tradeallow.com. Thanks, Ron. Hope you killed it in the market today. And again, the trading room is about making points and not little ticks. We're not for the small moves. Okay, we're not for the small moves. We're for the big uh, big profits here. Thanks so much, guys. See you soon.